All right, how should we march then, she? Oh, well, let's make myself less angry looking. Just a second. Just a second. Okay, okay. 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 Come on, come on. Uh, 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 uh. I did not mean to do that. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Huh? Huh? I... Okay. Please, please. Please. Set it to... Something really high. Okay. Wait, wait. Huh? Excuse me. F-18. Going insane. I just don't want to be mad right now. Please. Please. Okay. Okay. To F-19 or something. There we go. Okay, finally. That was stupid. Alright. So let's go back to Farm Azula. I got some stuff. There was a... Some rune. Rune arc. Where should I put that thing? Is it down there? I think it would have been down there, right? Something like that. Well, whatever. Let's just zap these birds. Okay. Oh, that didn't kill? Huh? Whatever. Should be. Hello! How are you doing? We should be able to beat base game Elden Ring today, but I don't think I'll be starting DLC quite yet. Okay, up top there. I need to get up top there then. Oh, but that's right. I need to go down there in order to make the elevator come back up. There's some runes I'm missing that I'd like to reclaim before I go down and finish things up. Oh, nice! Well, hopefully I can satisfy. How have you been? Just getting through things? Well, you know, happy to hear it. Next week should be the new Genshin patch. Which, for better or worse, is going to be interesting. They've been showing off a lot of the movement and traversal mechanics, which look really fun. It's going to be interesting to see how... Oh, right, right, right. I hope that picks up soon. That is not pleasant. It... I hope you never get into a... Oh, nice. I got an email about that from my doctor's office. I hope you don't have to deal with any more car crashes. Kind of an unpleasant thing. That's... Oh, okay, beast man. Oh, okay. Was that just at the place, or specifically for you? Okay. Ooh, gold eyes. Interesting. But what about the bandage? And how much should we... That's an okay amount. Yeah, we can get a level... Hmm. Two more levels and I'll be able to wield Giant Crusher without devoting an equipment slot to the talisman, so... Over here should be some things. What kind of pizza? Pizza's nice. Okay. Let's get a level real quick first. Figure out some of that. Should be... I guess we can put it in... It won't make much of a difference one way or the other magic versus... Hmm. So increases... Wait, magic... Left arm in three... Versus... Oh, because the... Faith wasn't increasing that? Interesting. Huh. Down there is... Right, this goes up inside. Pepperoni cheese stuffed crust. Well, I've never heard of pepperoni pizza without cheese. The idea of cheeseless pepperoni pizza sounds a bit frightening, actually. Seems a little aberrant. Mm -hmm. So we've been past here, and that... Is that... Yeah, that's actually... It's not the dragon 
Dragon Temple Rooftop versus Temple Wift, Temple Altar. So this is all part of the Dragon Temple? Interesting, okay. There should be an invasion slightly past here, so we'll get my weapons ready to fight him, fight him off. That'll be Recusant Bernal, who said he would meet us again anyway. Oh, and you could theoretically jump down to the start of the area from here, too. Not that there's any real reason to do it. This should be... Oh, hello. And Beastman right here. I remember this part from my first playthrough. Okay. Should invade somewhere around here, right? Wait, is this... Is this the right place? That's new, so this should be the right place. Yeah, that down there is the bridge to Blasphemous Claw. Got you here. Charge it up, and... Oh, interesting. That killed already. That dragon corpse is where one of the Crucible Knights was, and Silverstone 8, well, okay. And this is where it was before, and I tried jumping up here. It simply did not work. So, Bloody Heal... What Elise is going to be a good option here. Let's go down and... Hmm. Anybody else? And where are they? Let's we get the invasion icon going. Yep, he's showing up. Let's put our buffs back on. And then... Flame Protect Me should be good here. Yep, Recuse and Burn All. Awesome. Hello there. You some Dennis finesse. Alright. One, two, three. I Oh, alright. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Thanks. Ooh, we got blood loss too. Thanks. Two, three, and ooh. Dodge uh, and one. Ooh, okay. Luckily you have a crazy amount of boosts, and that's it. You go down easy. Thank you. Oh, acquired all legendary armaments. Cusant Vanquished, Blasphemous Claw, Devourer Scepter, Beast Champion Helm, Armor Altered, Gauntlets, and Greaves. Cool. Check that out. You can actually get this very early on if you kill him in the Warmaster Shack. Devourer Scepter, Scepter in the shape of a serpent devouring the world. This weapon will one day become the very symbol of the Lord of Blasphemy. Because that... Blasphemous Serpent can never truly die. One of the legendary armaments, a vision of the future briefly seen by Rykard in his final moments, for being devoured by the Great Serpent. What is interesting is that this seemingly confirms that the lands between is on a spherical planet. Charge the scepter with magic and strike against the ground to seal the HP of all nearby enemies, but actually deals fire damage, not magic. Blasphemous Claw, Slab of Rock, Engraved Traces of the Rune of Death can deflect the power of the Black Blade. On the night of the Dire Plot, Ronnie rewarded Praetor Rykar with these traces should the coming trespass once they transpire. Serve as a last resort foil, allowing Rykar to challenge Malekith the Black Blade, Black Beast of Destined Death. So their Helm Armor, Gauntlets, Greaves, Engraved Tiny Beasts, worn, worn by Grinald the Recusant, Beasts are drawn to champions and to wards, and his armor behits. Champion worthy of becoming a lord, and that is what Bernal was until his maiden threw herself into the fire. So presumably, given that he can get into farm Azula, he abandons becoming Elden Lord when his maiden burned herself at the Forge of the Giants, maybe. Possibly. And oh right. Hmm. Ooh, oh, okay. This is weirdly tough. Hmm. S slash and... Ooh, okay. What is the issue with the poise here? Kind of crazy. Okay. Thanks. One. Two. There we are. I guess we may as well go for the critical. Should have re-equipped the sword anyway. Okay. Hmm. Slash, slash, slash. Oh, that killed. The strong attacks are good. Should have been using those instead of Bloodhound's Finesse for a while. Oh, we got the Jar Shield. 
Shield fashioned from a tall broken jar carried by the beastmen from Zula, and there was a particular knack to wielding it. Beastmen have always fired earthenware jars for the express purpose of making shields, such as their wings strange though they are. Hmm. This should be the final bell bearing. No, that's the old horde's talisman. So where is the final? Oh, we got that. Yeah, Summer Soap Mother's Bell Bearing 5. Lord's Talisman, a legendary talisman depicting the ancient king, Placidi Sax, whose seat lies at the heart of the storm beyond time, extends the duration of the sorceries and incantations. It's said that the ancient royal city of Farm Azula has been slowly crumbling since time immemorial. Okay. Since the duration of all buff effects, actually. I suppose effects that aren't buffs, too. Okay, anything that I apply to myself. Inside the Great Bridge. That said, I think. May as well go kill Placidi Sacks first. Dragon Temple rooftop would be the best way to get down there, presumably. Okay. And actually, truly, uh, but truly max up damage. I'd want to put Rain of Arrows on the normal Great Bow, which technically is better base damage, and have Light Great Bow on the other hand. But this allows me to maintain some things. Let's see what I need to have equipped. Mm -hmm. Definitely want. Bolt Drake, and then honestly, probably not much else. Yeah. Wait. Ah, and we take the staff off and we can manage. Yeah, this is. It's not boosting damage, but the focus in the Placidity Sax fight shouldn't be damage anyway. It's not my own damage. Well, at least not the damage I deal, the damage I avoid. Alright, cool. Run past all these dudes, and what if I drop down? Any damage? No damage, okay. Now we just keep on rolling, I, okay. Hmm. Thanks. To get inside the arena. Come on. Come on. Get down there. There's going to be a place where I have to lie down in a coffin. So this is a Souls game, which means lying down in a coffin is just par for the course. So, let's keep on moving. Drop down here. Down to the bottom. Okay. Hmm. I think this is the right place. That's what I remember reading. Just in case, I should probably put Stitcher back on to kill that night. Hmm. I don't have a good floating rock. Said it. I don't really seem to be floating in as much as just tenuously connected. It's not all of it. So is this where we have left? Oh, there's a corner somewhere that you... Thank you. Mm. Corner that you have to lie down and to gain access to. For city sacks. Wait. 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 Is this the place or not? Honestly, can't tell. Hmm. Hi, hello. Oh my goodness. Stab the stupid bird. Come on. Okay. Thank you. City Sex Arena. Oh, awesome. Thanks. I Thanks, I... Oh, I... Oh, come on. This... Definitely is not it. 
City Sacks location. Sign the Great Bridge. Cluster of Trees. Whatever. Oh, goodness. Goodness. From beside the Great Bridge. Hmm. Back down, find a drop down somewhere in that church. Ooh, that was almost death. That would have meant needing another rune arc, too. Hmm. As cool as Shard of Alexander is, I want to focus on durability. Durability here, first and foremost. So, go back down. We have to find a place to lie down in here. Hello there. One, two, and oh, all right. Thanks. Okay, and and kill. I. All right. You can roll and slash slash. Should hopefully be. Somewhat useful. Find a place to lie down in. I think. Hopefully, there might be a spot with a prompt. Liar ahead. Hmm. There is the way to Placity Sacks. Hello. Oh, okay. One, two, three. Hmm. Oh, is it... Are they trying to get you to drop down there? I wouldn't imagine. Well. Hmm. Lord for city sacks. Cluster of trees. Platform to fall down to. Hmm. Straight out of the church. So here? Turn down. Ah, okay. Interesting. Drop down carefully and... Is this? Wait. Have I not been here before then? Or... Yeah, okay. Interesting. This is not where that crucible night was. This is something... Pretty much entirely separate. So then. Okay. This is something I did not do on my major build playthrough. Well, okay. So. Oh well. Find a spot to lie down. Spot without bones. Oh, interesting. And this. Huh. Where this is gonna take me then? Well, alright. Cool. <clears throat> oh, yep. Yeah. It's beyond time. Taking me to the end of the world or something. Oh, no, it's sending me back in time to when this arena wasn't destroyed. Huh. Oh, it's piecing it back together, but the storm itself is also swallowing me. Be really funny if all those beastmen skeletons turned back into living beastmen. I had to fight them as adds during the fight. Glad that isn't true though. And there it is. Dragon Lord Placidius Axe. To wander. Oh, and tinged with gold. 
a sort of real this spot is. But that old lord's talisman has four heads, but this city sacks only has two because two were ripped off by a DLC boss, I'm pretty sure. Here it is. What this place used to look like. It's part of it. All these mausoleums and put me in a weird map location then. Let's put our bow back on, and this is our weapon for the fight. Okay. For any of that, let me just use Nicola's Needle before I forget. I do not want to become Lord of Frenzied Flame. Where is that thing? Where is it? Maybe in tools? Tools? Probably. Yep. Okay, cool. Use Mikkel's needle to tame the flame of frenzy? Sure, why not? Okay, cool. And we are no longer the Lord of Frenzied Flame. Cool. And that needle has been used up, and we cannot re-accept the flame. What to go home? Alright. Hmm. Put our stuff on. Presumably when we cross that threshold, that's when things are going to start getting hairy. Well, it's about as close. Oh, guess who doesn't have cold and lightning fortification equipped? Me. Okay. Hmm. Oh, alright. Thank you. And... Hit the Radon's right. Ooh, well, oh, it... That's okay. Alright. Hmm. Okay. Damage is good. Ooh, breath. I Ooh, come on. This is interesting. Hi. Okay. No. Hmm. Let's keep on shooting you. It's a really, really good option. A really, really good. Okay. And how much can I cheese this? Can I avoid your super attack? Maybe. Let's just run away anyway. Where did you go? It's not good news. Oh, all right. Okay. Oh, ooh, okay. Huh. I. Okay. Oh, oh, all right. Thanks. Dodge. Okay. Oh, please. And I know you're going to use eventually your. Oh, okay. Hmm. How many more buffs can we get up for this has to. Oh, Thunderquad form. That's not good. Okay, well, okay, alright. Mm -hmm. When are we gonna use your super attack? That's probably it. Okay. Oh, well, alright. Dodge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not having golden lightning fortification here is kind of trouble, so not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, alright. Thanks. I okay? Kind of Madeir type. Uh, what? Huh? That's some nonsense. Huh. Well, okay. Among other things, there's a rune arc I missed in Frenzied Flame Prescription. So, alright. Not expecting that to just totally wipe me. Maybe I should have. That. Put that on there. Cool. And well, that doesn't mean much now, does it? So one of these spots is a an illusory wall. Might be this one. Okay. There we go. Should be a rune arc in here, among other things. 
Another one that goes to deep root depths. That's still a heavy load. Okay. Let's... Okay. That's good. And there we have it. Deep root. Oh, right, because... Set of grace. Hmm. First off, map. Grant. Yep, and this is the spot it was previously unable to reach. I... Over here, okay. Come back here after that fight. <coughs> should also... Go back here. I think the round table should be burning. It's starting to burn. Not quite burning yet. Ah, Roderica. Okay. Take a look around. The round table hold is burned. Raised to the ground. Don't worry. I don't blame you. I'll continue spirit tuning just the same as before. Mm -hmm. Which is why I need your help. Ah. Persuading Master Hugh to leave. His roots Hello. are so knotted in this place. Knotted roots because he's shackled to his anvil. Roots. Free man now. He's a free man now. It's high time he put the round table behind him. Our hobbery is burning. I see. Spirit tuning. So can we ask him if he wants to leave? And she's not in her little corner anymore. Oh, Smith has long as you like. Hmm. Yeah. Like happy rolls. God slaying weapons, still making weapons. Well, all the weapons I took to plus ten or plus twenty-five. And my promise to Queen. And my promise to Queen America. It's America and made him promise to create a god's looking weapon. Zumba to kill her. Do look after the girl. Spirit tuner. Why are you still making weapons? Can't hold on much longer. It's connected. Right. Just once before it ends. Mm. So he is one of the sort of persecuted species in this world, a misbegotten. Sort of a humanoid with animal traits. But that sword he has, I think that's a banished knight's great sword. Only a couple of gods you can actually kill in the game, and one of them is DLC's boss. I see. Spirit tuning about I Hugh. See. Oh, is that right? He doesn't want to leave. He's mm. determined to yeah, stay here till the end. Regardless. She's kind of his adopted daughter. I know he was given this great entreaty. Charged by the goddess. What is interesting is that some of the other items in the game talk about the idea of a duty as a curse. Specifically these. Some duty weighs upon one beholden, not unlike a null and curse from which there is no deliverance. And I wonder what Anya will have to say. I know she'll die eventually once it truly burns. Even after she dies, we'll still be able to exchange power with her. Dog ends. But he'll never speak again. Fingers are broken. Hmm. You'd force this tired old crone to work even now. Okay, nothing there. Believe is right. Hmm. 
As opposed to what you said before, which is let the wisdom of the fingers guide you because the fingers are now no longer active. What do you have to say? You burned the earth tree, didn't you? In fact, I did. The table is soon to hmm. follow. Nah, no need to fret about that. The round table holds served to put a tarnished upon the throne of Elden Lord. And if the earth tree needed to burn for that to happen, then the round table must go as well. Well, we'll deal with him eventually. I'll stay at the round table for a time. For a time. Learn all that can be taken from this place. But we'll see him again. Into my in person. How could I call myself the all-knowing if I did any less? The pursuit of knowledge is without end. For knowledge so I guess he's less of the all-knowing and more the all-learning. All-studying. I wonder what he was in that Japanese house translated. Who's to say whether the fight is finished. What do you think? As one who aspires to become elder. Well, we'll kill him. That's the thing. Well. Does it know? Uh, what, what do you mean by that? How, how would that be done from a distance, metaphorically? I, I... I wonder as to what you could have... What you could possibly mean by that. Maybe. That said, I'm not sure I would have the ability to go. Time ability at all. Oh, that's funny. Which one? I Golden Lightning Fortification would be a good option, but Detection of the Urgery is probably better, actually, even if it's not as much in total. Golden Lightning Fortification would be an Urgery Incantation, right? Wrath of Gold. There we are, but... So... Lords Divine, Barrier of Gold, and... Golden Lightning are all Urgery, and then this is Fire Monks, and this is... Black Flame. <laughs> oh, okay. That... That's interesting. You, you would think that... It would be the other way around, wouldn't it? Well, no matter. It... I, I think... It's hard to say, and I know Twitch culture is fundamentally different. I, I, I think... I don't think that's really, really true. <laughs> okay, so that's still the heavy load. Now back on, we gotta run out into... Let's put this back up anyway. Okay. Gotta run past them, past all of these guys. Drop down that platform, we can just run straight through. Hmm. Okay, and down here is right in that platform. Drop down. It, it is interesting thinking about the different reasons people stream that way, sort of. To what extent it's tourism or a desire to sort of not have to, you know, dress up, so to speak. And th that is meaningful, but it. It takes a very different shape, so to speak, for better or for worse. Okay, so let's go try this one again. Don't need that time travel cutscene. Okay. So, my buffs are right over there. Put this on and then start buffing up. Blessing of the Urgery, Golden Vow, and then... Oh, protection of the Urgery. This silly... Wait, which one? It's so hard to figure out which one is which. I may be stupid. Okay, let's get this started. Hello, Posidious Axe. Let's start shooting again. Alright. Go ahead, and... Should be a good spot. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay, dodge. I okay. Shoot again, and... Oh, well, alright. Took a hit, but that's not 
Not... Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. You're using your nuke. Oh, so that's a first phase attack. Okay, cool. That's a very, very cool attack. But I guess he doesn't use it in phase two. That's kind of weird. Well, whatever. I, I expected a bit more from poise. Oh, whatever. And uh, that didn't hit anything? You've got to be kidding me. Come on. This is actually going a lot worse than it did the first time around. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many more buffs do we need? I, okay, well, alright. Thanks. Cool. Ja, ja, oh, well, alright. Mm -hmm. Let's put my buffs back on. And what are you... Oh, I... Interesting. Huh. Dodge protection of the Urgery. And okay, alright. Mm -hmm. Do okay, thank you, and we're in a spot to avoid the breath attack largely, and that's good. Because that was what killed me last time, in part because I also just had issues using. Come on. The right talismans, and there we go. Ooh, well, I did not expect that to hit as it did. Okay. Thanks. Pull this hit. Yeah, okay, cool. Thanks. Continue shooting. I oh, okay. Da oh, alright. Come on. Dodge. Da oh, well, okay. Heal, heal. Where are you? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. We need to heal up before we end up getting uh, tapped. Dodge. Dodge. Oh, okay. So you got a good amount of stuff. Stuff. Okay. Cool. Should be a decent spot now. One more. Well, not if you just dodge out of the way and... There we go. Finally tap. Okay. Remembrance of the Dragon Lord. Feed a Dragon Lord Posidious Axe. Okay. And... Yep, we got an okay amount of runes. We can level up a couple of times. Boss Grace discovered, and this is... Dragon Lord Posidious Axe. Let's level up one more time. Get that faith up. And I need 65 or so more, 65,000 or so to... Remembrance of Dragon Lord City Sex, hewn into the Ur Tree, the power of its namesake, and locked by the finger reader, alternately can be a skin great bounty of runes. The Dragon Lord, whose seat lies at the heart of the storm beyond time, is said to have been Elden Lord the age before the Ur Tree. Once his god was fled, the Lord continued to await its return. Hmm. Take these two heroes' runes. All that remained was a distant duty. And that we need 430. Basically exactly 430. And we can get one more level of strength. Use that to take some stuff down. Yep, and now we can use Giant Crusher without needing to equip a Talisman just for it. That Dragon Lord was City Sacks, but there was no actual map of Lair. So, there is a... Let me see. Got ten more of those, which should be... That's more than we need. About as many as we could possibly need. That Giant Crusher going... Virtue's favor plus one, and... Great Jar's Arsenal still, okay. Well, that works. Okay. Let's... Switch some stuff back. Do I need this one now? Put on, I guess, Burno Flame. It's usually a decent one. Okay. 
Okay. Keep on going. Take down that funny little Draconic Tree Sentinel. It's back where we killed Bernal. Keep the claw on somewhere now. Golden Hell. And you know, let's go for Black Flame. Alright. Cool. And. Oh, I. Wrong one. I forgot to actually switch my. Ash of War. That's right. Okay. Not good. Oh, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, and. Alright. Oh, what? I. Okay. Can you come down here? I hope you can. It's not good. It's not good for me. Really not good for me. Okay. Ashes of War. That should be Vine's Claw. Take Heavy for now. Let me just see. Give it the best AR here. Eventually, quality will be best. Eventually. Heavy, that's just worse in every way. Also worse in every way. So right now that's 799. 793. Colt is 845. So the best by decent margin. Let's go back up and take him down. I guess I could go back to that little bit of deep root before taking out the rest. Okay. Start this up. Buff up. Golden Vow. You know what? Golden Lightning Fortification. Okay. You know what? Let's make a this too. Oh, Hajime Machitenshi. Dom's tough. Thank you for the follow. Hey, okay, and... Keep... Crushing this guy. Ideally, and... Can I... Slam. And... Ooh. Slam. We need a bit more healing. Goober? What does that... What does that even mean? Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh what... Okay, dodge. I need heal badly. Yeah. Do oh, what? Oh, we did manage to dodge through that. Let's just continue lines clawing it up, and there you are. Very dead. Oh, okay, understandable. I should have figured out, figured as much. Okay, Malform Dragon Helm. But yeah, we are in the end game of Base Elven Ring. From Dragon Helm, Armor, Gauntlets, and Greaves. It's good to see you again. Malform Golden Helm, adorned with various dragon imagery and worn by the misshapen tree sentinels. After the great ancient dragon Grand Sacks attack, the sentinels had an epiphany. The only way to truly protect the Ur Tree was to become dragons themselves. Okay. These are decent. I think they might actually be lighter than the normal tree sentinel armor. No, they Yeah, yeah, the normal tree sentinel armor is actually heavier, but this. Slightly worse in a lot of ways. Golden Rune 12. My question for myself right now is honestly the final boss sequence of this game is a sequence of either the final, very final area, depending on how you interpret it, either three or four bosses right in, the row, right in a row, and I'm wondering if I'd want to try to do it without resting at all. Because it would be very possible, especially since. I've fought a lot of extra bosses and gotten a lot stronger that way. Extra bosses that are, frankly, a bit stronger than the actual final bosses. It is what it is. Okay. So, before any of this, let's put on... Well, I could try using the hammer, maybe. Let's put on Black Flame, because I'm going to need to kill some ants here. Always a good option for taking ants down. Hmm. Older Souls games used to have armor be upgradable, which was 
A very funny option, honestly. Just is another thing you'd have to use upgrade materials on. It didn't make the game better in any way. I, I, I'm not sure whether it really made it all that much worse if it did, but it was just sort of, okay, cool. Interesting idea. So this is a place we've been before a long while ago, the Deep Root Depths. But this area, this side of Grace, this checkpoint, is one that I was not able to get into before. Because it was connected to the bottom part of an area I didn't have access to yet, which was the Frenzied Flame Prescription. Which is a sort of little platforming puzzle area that leads you to... The Frenzied Flame, which is sort of the evil path of the game, the only part of the game, which is probably kind of unambiguously evil. It's actually, you know what? Got a lot of stuff. May as well buff up anyway. Okay. Some stuff going. Put this on. See how many black flames we need to kill all these ants. And that... We are doing very good damage. So this giant ant should hopefully drop a rune arc for me. And that's a Newman's rune and a rune arc. Thank you. Which is good because if I died, I would be out of buffs. Well, out of rune arcs to buff myself with because they give you a buff that lasts until death. And a pretty sizable buff too. It's the equivalent of items like humanities and... Embers or human effigies in other Souls games, but... Quite frankly, the buffs in Elden Ring are a bit bigger, I would say, except for maybe the human effigy restoring your maximum health back to maximum. And that means very little to me. After, because your maximum health in Dark Souls 2 can go down, it goes down every time you die, you get increasingly hollow, and you have to use a human effigy to restore your max health back to its original maximum. And depending on how much you lose, and there will still alleviate that, there's a ring that allows you to have. Because normally you can go down to 50% of your maximum health. If you kill a bunch of people in PvP or kill a bunch of NPCs or otherwise commit quote-unquote sins in-game, the amount... Eventually, the limit on that goes all the way down to 5%. You can have your HP reduced to 5% of its normal maximum, which is as crazy as it sounds, but... Normally it's only 50, and there's a ring you can equip to make it so that it only takes you down to 75 at maximum hauling. But, it's not crazy crazy. It can definitely be worked around, and... Though a lot of people say that in Dark Souls 2, that ring is kind of mandatory. I didn't use that ring for most of my playthrough. Hormic Rock can be used for perfumes, which are a... Another kind of buffing potion that I don't really use. Okay. There are a lot of interesting... Oh, I don't think that will let me get back. It's not good. That jump is not going to be one I can really make. Uh, uh. Interesting place. Yeah, this is really, really high up. That down there is actually... An aerial link to one of the endings, specifically the Death Prince ending, which I don't think I'm going to do, but it's interesting. There was a special boss. There was a dragon I fought earlier in Posidius X, the Dragon Warrior, King of the Dragons, and what the hell? You're serious? Okay. Can't believe the camera angle just screwed me there. Well, I can. I just wouldn't like to. Huh, okay. It's a good thing I got that rune arc, but I probably should not put it back on until... Oh, goodness. I shouldn't put it back on until I've gotten through this spot. It Platforming in this game is much better than other Souls games, but... Platforming has never been a highlight of the Souls series. Well, actually, in Elden Ring, it's actually pretty fun. It It's not a platforming game, but it exists... The big thing is that it has a dedicated jump button. It's something they add in Sekiro, and they actually changed the jump physics in Sekiro, and by extension in here to just be a lot more flexible. You can 
change your movement direction while mid-jump pretty easily and pretty well, which is not exactly physically realistic, but it makes for better gameplay. So we still can use our Black Flame. Good stuff. Okay. Let's go down and get those runes back, please. Ooh, down there. That is not great. Just trying to figure out how I'm going to get back over there. I might want to put on a sacrificial twig. Maybe. Is this going to let me go up? I can go up there. That's good. Let's drop down here. Thank you. Continue dropping down and get those runes back, hopefully. Oh, it... So it becomes a problem a lot with probably having to move around a lot, getting thrown around a lot, and not being able to really adjust for when you're getting thrown around. Ark is interesting. I got it for free a while ago on Epic. I have not had a chance to really play it yet. I know that... Would you say it has any meaningful similarities to Monster Hunter? That may be a little bit of a dumb question. But I have a lot of friends who are big into Monster Hunter, or at least decently into Monster Hunter. And I might have mentioned this before, but I purchased World when it was on sale last winter season. And that's one that I do want to get into. Uh, so all these ants are just clinging to walls. Oh, okay. Fun, I- alright. Okay, give me the ability to lock on, please. So, Black Flame's special gimmick is that it deals 5% of, of an enemy's max HP in addition to whatever base damage it does. Which means it's really, really good for killing bosses and other high HP enemies. And the DLC, they actually reduce that to 2.5%. Okay, fair. There are a lot of games out there. It It's hard to stay familiar with. Even the ones I actually play. Down there is... Is that a spot I can actually get down to, or...? Yeah, that's actually the start of the area normally. That is Great Waterfall Crest. Okay. What do you mean by NPCs tameable? Sorry, I'm not sure what you're referring to. A rust with dinosaurs and much larger maps. Okay. It... One of the few things I know about Rust is that you start out naked. Golden Rune 5, and lots of herbs. Good amount. And it's really, really funny, because... If I'm not wrong, that's the big reason that it's M-rated, that... You know, it's a violent game, but not gratuitously slow. At least not incredibly, but... Because you start out just hanging it. It's rated M by necessity. You know, because even Souls, Souls has default, a default loincloth that you always have on, even if you take everything else off. In Bloodborne, instead of a loincloth, it was more just actual sort of Victorian-style underclothes, which was fitting and amusing. Fair. That makes sense. So this is something I saw when I went through the area originally. I saw these ants walking around, and oh, we had a good enough AoE that... That killed. Oh, there were four, not three. And anything else over here, or... Oh, there was one more ant. Okay. okay. Oh, and that... Mm. The drain did not kill. Okay, cool. That did. Alright. And the ant will gradually vanish. Yep, this is... The actual area we went through before... Hello, welcome back. How are you doing? Good to see you again. Hmm. Those are all areas I've been able to access previously. Just leads down to... the actual part of the area with the actual boss fight and the actual... progress towards the game's ending. There was one item that I could not actually access. That is kind of weird. Oh well. Hmm. I... Honestly, as dumb as it sounds, given that one of you plays Minecraft, I honestly feel as if 
I could maybe invite you to the modded server if you have any interest. Especially since... Well, there was an incident. Last time I was on, there was a controversial game of cat and mouse with me stealing stuff from a friend. A friend who was also named Dom, actually. He's also a Dominic. But... So I'm not sure, even though I'll get on, I'm not sure how much I'd like to engage with him for the sake of interesting content. Yeah, yeah, there's a guy who's doing some art for me right now who I also invited on there. I'll see when I get back on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There's another item, though. Another item I needed to find. I don't know how I'm going to drop down there, though. But other than that, there are just... To oh, either four or six more bosses, depending on how you define things. Hello, welcome back. Fair. Now, I there there is a no destructive griefing rule on the server set by the server manager, so to speak. And what happened was, is that I stole everything from the storage system. And there was... It, it was an interesting situation, which is why I'm wondering how... Griefing or antagonism is going to really work on the server in the future. Especially if I've got more people on. Big thing is also just... Right now, the only people really on the server are me occasionally, the other Dom, my friend Jack, who Dom also knows, of course, and then Jack's girlfriend. And other than that, it's not really anybody. So it'd be nice to just get an infusion of new blood for its own sake. But how the heck do I get up there? No, really. What is... Do I jump on... Oh, right! I forgot! I can use my horse here! It... This may surprise you. Right, Golden Rune 8, that's not much. Okay. But the entire reason the server was more or less created in the first place was... For them to play together. It's okay. You, you really don't have to apologize. I'm literally asking you about Minecraft stuff. It's a relevant topic. It, if there were more people talking, I might object to people carrying on a bunch of conversations at once, but that is not a problem at the moment. So, don't worry. Do not worry. Hmm. So physical damage is still going to be the most relevant part. Can I, I still can't use that. What gloves can I put on? If I take this off, what can I put on? Medium, medium, medium. Let's gonna take cavalry gauntlets. The talk about not putting yourself down and not apologizing for wanting to talk about things. That's the talk. Words divine? Okay. Should be good. So, Garonk and Malakath should go down pretty easily to just spamming Lion's Claw with Giant Crusher. We got 846 base damage on this thing, which is pretty crazy. That's nice and all. We just buff up before we enter the arena. That should be good. Oh, right, we need to put Blasphemous Claw on here, especially since switching is not going to be a problem. Something just die. Probably some Crucible Knight related. Omen Baron, I don't use that. Okay. Let's buff up and get this party started. Golden Val and Black Flames for first phase, I suppose. Okay. Then I think I'll use Lord's Divine Fortification for the next phase. That should be fine. Special dialogue, because we did this quest before. This is Garog. Thank you. 
dodge. Mmm. And, uh, okay. Keep on missing. Alright. Interesting. Oh, okay. I, I'm not sure how that works. Let's get that crit off. Thank you. And face transition. This guy isn't all that bad, frankly. So Dogman is going to become Magic Dogman. As one does. Become my blade once more. So the dagger we had is... A bigger version of the Cincadea, which is something we actually were able to pick up around. Take your time. His arena. I mean, the spot where he has that NPC to his quest, but he turns it into Malachus Black Blade. The weapon we can get with his remembrance, it's decent. Alright. Tinged a bit with gold. One of the coolest character designs in the game, I'd say. Funny dog, man. Okay. And you're right there. Not okay. Slam. Okay, alright. And. Okay. Thanks. I. Ooh. And, of course, our max HP is being absolutely shredded. And, oh, well, alright. Dodge and slam. Dodge. Ooh, okay. Yo, dodge. Cannot. There we go. We got the crit off. And finish this off. Cool. And pretty simple. As Merrick has sealed away Shadow, Remembrance of the Black Blade, and now the Erd Tree will well and truly burn, because we have freed Death and Death. It, familiar relations are complicated when they're not real. I'm everyone's brother. Regardless of the situation, that's what I'd like to say. Here we, here we have it. We got the Rune of Death, which is a little similar to... The Norse Death Rune, arguably. But it's also just cross-shaped. That big rune in the back looks a bit like a Radiance from Hollow Knight. Also a bit like some DLC stuff, but that... Red, black, tinged with gold. The Rune of Death is unbound. Thank you, Edia. That will also mean the death of any of herself. Interestingly enough, she sells anything missed from Gideon. After death, actually. Dark fate. Now everyone can die again. The awesome. Will also burn the impenetrable thorns. Mm -hmm. Bright red archery. You'll be Elden Lord yet. All right. Here we are in Wayndale Ashen Capital. And now that it's covered in ash, a lot of the items from before are now inaccessible. It's a good thing we got them all. Big one is the Bolt of Grand Sacks, one of the nine legendary weapons, if you didn't get it. When it was still into a golden capital, well, you're SOL. Okay. Here we are, we got this going on. So that over there, the only remaining real structure, is going to be the site of the three final boss battles. Well, the three battles in the final boss sequence. And here we are, and is that a... It's not a finger reader. 
actually a decent amount of things. Land all capital of ash. Get a bit more HP. Thank you. Good amount, even 1500. It's a shame we can't use the horse here. But it does not change the map. Interestingly enough. Dropped in a well we can get. Sewer great, we can get a special talisman. Hold the Ur tree yet stands. Tall and unwavering, mindless of the scorch of the flame of ruin. Hmm. Probably before it started truly burning then. Yeah, we are yet golden ones, but it's a ghost, so that guy died. Probably buried by the ash. Wah wah. So we drop down into this sewer grate, which is now open, presumably because people maybe tried to escape through the sewer, probably got eaten by the omens or something. That's comeuppance. Drop down here and get crimson amber talisman. Crimson amber medallion plus two, which is the highest. HP boost talisman. It does not actually do all that much, though. It's kind of crap. That Blasphemous Claw would have allowed us to actually parry and stun Malekith, but our damage was good enough that we didn't need it. We just stunned him normally. So in that case, if we go over here to Forbidden Land side of Grace, we can work our way back into here. Because this gate is now blocked off, but there is a special talisman hidden around this area that you have to work your way back to get. So I want to see what the round table is like now that everyone there is basically gone. Derek is still there, and he is dead, and... Oh, it's not just burning now, it's actively ashen. Yep, Gideon is gone. Roderica is... chilling. Hello. It's got this gray tinge to everything. Hmm. So now it's only Roderica, Hugh, and the dead Enya. Oh, he's forgetting. I must be a blacksmith. What kind of? Oh, presumably he's losing his memories and his mind because of his connection spiritually to the hold. Could you tell me what happened? Hmm. Does he even remember Merica at this point? Why does that go oh, for me? It's forgotten all the memories he made. Have I forgotten something of dire importance? Hmm. Well then. But yeah, everyone is gone. It At this point everyone leaves and they leave behind bell bearings implying they die somehow. But, almost of them. Yep, Annie is now dead too. We can actually receive some of this remembrance power from Dragon Lord or Black Blade. Right, we can read this now. Malekith was a shadow button beast given to his Empyrean, who is Merica. Empyreans are the greatest gods. Merica's sole need of her shadow was a vessel to lock away in death and death. Even then, she betrayed him. We can get the Black Blade, or we can get the Incantation. I... It's actually pretty interesting. I might want to use that on certain DLC enemies, maybe. Malchus Black Blade, which once harbored the power of the Rune of Death, a sad shadow of its former glory. After a fragment of death was stolen on that fateful night, the Knight of Black Knives were America's most beloved child, God when the Golden was slain, and then everything kind of went to crap. Malchus bound the blade within his own flesh. That's why he had to stab his hand, it's such that none might ever rob death again. He still destined death, set free the remnants of destined death, pointing to the great sword in the ground, summon a myriad of blades. In addition to dealing immediate damage, this attack reduces the enemy's maximum HP, continues to wear down HP for a short time. So these are two out of the three destined death effects. There's also the black knife weapon that we got earlier from killing an assassin. And then the Gargoyle's Black Blade kinda has a lesser death and death. That's where I belong. What are you making? I I like cooking. Usually I make a lot of fried rice these days. Caster creates an illusory black blade, then leaps forward to deliver a spinning slash that emits a wave of light. If 
followed up with one additional attack. This is less a myriad of blades and more a myriad of slashes, and you can see that... Actually, it's not really any more complete. Ah, interesting. The classic breakfast burrito for dinner. There we go. Remember to the Dragon Lord. Dragon King's Crag Blade is a good option, too, but... Piercing Gravelstone Sword. Attaining Primeval Lightning, a portion of the Dragon Lord's power gained from a Remembrance. Weapon commends great power with a paltry mort of dragons of today, which means it has a very high damage modifier versus all dragons, but... It's actually pretty good, but... The fact that it deals lightning damage too, which dragons tend to pretty heavily resist, makes it kind of eh. Presidious Axe's Ruin. Transforms caster into the Dragon Lord to speed golden breath from above, can be cast while jumping. These are the dying wills of the Dragon Lord, who once dwelt eternally beyond time. If he's beyond time, then he's kind of dead, but also not, no. Thunderclawed form, temporarily transform into a red thunderclaw and fly through the air, then plunge down with a lightning infused blade. Bolts include the reach of the thunderclaw form and deals pretty crazy stance damage. But. I. This might actually be the option. I. Mm, but I'd have to do a lot of trades to really make it work, is the thing. I. I don't know. It's much, much to think about. I, you know what? Why not? Let's take the sword. If I really want the breath, I could have other ways of making that work. There are a few enemies who I'd like to actually try that on. That might be good against... Mmm, as good as it would be against Horolu. I don't know. Somberstones... Hmm. Be good against a couple of the bosses in Endgame, but it takes so long, and Godfrey isn't that slow. Not sure how well I can make use of it, but Remembrance Duplication isn't crazy difficult anyway. Big thing is, go back to Forbidden Lands, and then we can... Oh... Work our way back to where a bunch of tree spirits are. We want to put fire on this giant crusher. Pine Squad and fire versus flame art. Four fifty five, four hundred thirty seven. It's an eighteen difference. Four hundred ninety. 484, so fire is actually better in every way right now. It's interesting. But, we're chilling. This should be a good way to take down the tree spirits I'll need to kill. Bunch of tree wooden enemies around the area, so. Dispatch them, get a. It's going to be a better version of Urtree's Favor. It's going to be Urtree's Favor plus two, actually. It's going to be nice. Might allow wielding a slightly heavier... Oh. Item in conjunction. Slightly heavier gauntlets. That little room down there was where we got Melina's equipment and sword. Good old Melina. Right, because I don't have my starlight up right now. That is that divine tower over there. That does not mean much to me. Gotta go back, and this is... It's that elevator. Oh, right, we still got this over here, which means... Working my way back is gonna take a little while. That's okay. It does seem that most of the enemies here are gone, which is good. Oh, but you're not. In that case, let's put our Godskin Stitcher back on. And just poke this guy and his horse to death. Classic. Hello there. And good old Bernie Urgery. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, hello. Enjoy a wonderful death. And now that your master is dead, you are afraid. 
All right. Mm. Dodge. Stab. Stab. Take you out. I wonder what that incantation was going to be. Oh well. And is that... Where did that horse go? Oh, it's still here. No one else to mount it, though. Alright. Thanks. Oh, that killed. Okay. Wait for the third hit, and go back. The length of this approach actually reminds me a bit of... Final Act of Sekiro, where you had to backtrack through the very first area of the game. It's a bit different. Especially since Waynedale is somewhere in between the first third to the end of the first third to the end of the second third, depending on the order you do things in. But so for me it was definitely more like marking the two thirds point of the game. Because I went through a decent amount of mid to late game rather early. I would use this. It's not a button or a pressure point, it's just a lever. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Okay. Well, then, do I want to do this? Hmm. Go back down here and just see. What enemies are around this area then? I hear something absolutely just trudging around. There's one of them. Oh, the entire water pool is completely full. Oh, interesting, because previously there was a big pond sort of thing, but now it's completely filled up with the ash left behind. It's kind of sad. So that item is one that was there before. Let's put our giant crusher back on. We should be chilling now. Now it's cavalry gauntlets. And... Nothing down there. We're going to need to buff up for this. In total, I believe there are going to be three. Alright. Bearer of gold might actually be better for this. Depending on the situation. Well, whatever. There should be three in total. That... It's gonna be interesting. I mean, Lord's Divine Fortification. And now you're coming. Now you're coming. Okay. Get over here. Don't want to have to fight multiple of you at once. Oh, come on. You're behind over this way. How am I supposed to? Really? Really? Get over here. I want to fight you. Now. Preferably without the other two showing up. What is even? Yep. Okay, cool. Okay. Alright. Thanks. Come on. I. Alright. And dodge and. Okay, thanks. Oh, please. I, okay. Swing. Dodge. Swing. And. Cannot. Oh, well, never mind. I, okay. Mm -mm. Alright. Not. What? Okay. I, uh, really? That didn't successfully stance break? There we go. We actually got the stance break now, which means let's charge that up. And can I. I. What? Okay, never mind. This is just ridiculous. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright. Yo, yo. And. I. Okay. Alright. Let's go to. Vines a few more times. And there we go. We got one down. Okay. So there are two more. One that I see, one that I don't. Let's be prudent about this. Okay. Question is where the others are going to be. Do not want to have to fight multiple of you at once. Hi there! One! And... Two! And... Three! And... Wait, what? Okay. Huh. 
There we are. Let's get stance break attack off. Well, it can't do that, it seems, because... Oh, okay. Fine. Can't actually get on the same level as you. Okay. Alright. And... Hmm. This is certainly something. Luckily, its attacks are also missing me pretty well, too. That's alright. Then... There we are. Can we get a critical off? It doesn't really seem like it. Okay. There should be just one more, probably around here. Get this started. Golden Vow. Lord's Divine. Okay. That over there should be the final legendary talisman. I get close, I think. Yep, that's when it starts. Hello there, hi. Okay. Thanks. Slam. Oh, okay. Oh, we actually managed to stand break through the attempted grab? I'll take it. That, that's okay damage. Lion's Claw actually having high damage in and of itself is actually kind of silly here. And we hit. And one more should do it. There we go. Let's finish it off with a critical, actually. And there we go. And that's all three of the special ulcerated tree spirits down. Cool. What if they respawn? Frankly, I wouldn't like to have to actually find that information out. But this should be... Virtue's favor plus two. Nice! Yeah, acquired all legendary talismans. See, it looks even prettier. The original plus zero, or just regular Virtue's favor, no additional accoutrements, was just the woman. Probably Merica, I would presume. Special blessing. That's gotta be Merica. And then the branch decorations on the top and bottom got added now, and now we have these. They're ornate and all leafed up. Cool. And that, it's only a little bit more, but it's pretty good. It's still at... We can use Radon's Gauntlets now, though. That's decent. We'd still have two pieces of Bull Goat equipped even while using Giant Crusher. It's nice. But my question is... I know this doesn't even have all that much higher AR than the Occult Giant Crusher did, and the Occult Giant Crusher also had the advantage of just not having its damage split. Split damage means that it gets the subtractive effect of enemy defense twice. Well, if it's two damage types. If it's more damage types, because some weapons do... Oh, three types of damage or more at the same time. You get even more subtracted, but... Yeah, because for example, Sword of Night and Flame and... The Rolana... Double Swords from DLC... Deal Magic, Fire, and Normal Physical. But the thing about the twin one is that... It's split between the swords, so one sword deals physical and magic, and the other deals physical and fire, which helps its performance a little, because it doesn't run into that split too much. But it's not, still not amazing. In general, you want to deal just one damage type, and you don't have the right. Yep, so we can get on the other side, but we wouldn't be able to access it from the other, actual other, other side. I want to see is if I go to the oh I can't actually teleport to that bridge that side of grace is gone my question is if I went to the tower of return I should actually be able to teleport back I think because that allows you to it's the only way to get to the tower that activates Mulaney's Great Rune. 
that wasn't accessible, I wouldn't really be able to do all that much. Oh, and now we can put on Bulgo Helm and maintain medium load. That's fun. So I wonder if we can still get teleported to that bridge. I wonder if it has any sort of acknowledgement of whether you activated Moenia's Great Rune and that might be what determines it. So over here we've got a grace for the isolated Divine Tower. Because when you first go to that bridge, if you take the funny little teleport here, you can't activate the wing gate that sends you to the isolated Divine Tower. You can only do that once you've actually gotten to Wimgrave normally. Oh, and they use Golden Bell. Fun. Good and fast. Kill the Great Shield. Oh, that's new. Cured by Nets, the Godric, Red Tinge of the Gold, Mirrors the Primal Dramatter that became the Earth Tree. Color of Homeward Yearning. Right, because for the Crucible Knights, they have that Red Tinge of Gold. Which is not just gold, but a Red Tinge of Gold. Okay. Now, other guys are walking around there. Let's just see if we can get teleported back. This does normally just yeet you over to Wayne Dell early. So what if I did it like this? I never really noticed how much gold there actually was on the bull goat set. Yep, we can actually take the teleport. Yep. And go back to that bridge. Yep. Alright. My question is, could I... I think I see a side of grace there. So this... Mmm... The lever simply does not work anymore because there is no way down into the mansion that used to be the Round Table Hold. Well, I mean, the mansion upon which the Round Table Hold was based. This, oh, now it's in the Was this always in the center? I don't even remember at this point. Yep, Divine Bridge. And that... Oh, the golem is back. Oh, right, because Langdale Ashen Capital presumably loads in differently. Okay. Very interesting. Let's put a Colt back on this thing. There we are, and that is going to be max damage. And the scaling on that, the amount it gets from scaling is more than double its base. It's kind of crazy. Thanks, and... There we go. How much damage are we gonna deal? This one was always a tough one. Yeah, I think it's a bit stronger now that we're in Ashen Capital instead. It does seem like that to me. Okay, cool. Feels like a few more runes than last time, too. So, we can take this over to Isolated Tower, now that it really means anything anymore. Okay. We've already been here, already activated. Melania's Great Rune, and now we can see the Burning Earth Tree. And Farm Zilla over there. Tornado looks a bit different with the different lighting. It appears a bit wider, a bit more washed out. Alright then. So my question is, how far back could I get? If I went over to, can go to Capital Rampart. Can just still teleport there. If I went in from deeper depths then, let's see what's all in here. It's back on. Oh wait, if I, Mmm, but I've still got hat out. Okay. I wasn't rolling, so I didn't notice that I had heavy load, but I did. Okay. Let's keep on moving. The only thing really left should be talking to Corin. I mean, gold mask. Corin. Actually, I think they're both dead. But 
retrieving the mending root of perfect order. All right. Keep on moving. It's pretty. Yeah, it is completely bereft of enemies now. It seems as if the rune of death getting let loose meant death of all those dudes, which does make sense because they were all kind of undead. Presumably, only death being plucked out of the Elden Ring is what kept them alive. And oh, Bok's still here. Hello. Back to East Capital Rampart. Bok, this seems ready to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is interesting that, that is his specific location. This just does not open anymore. Hmm. So what else might be up here? I guess it really is just the ash. But that also... Subterranean shunning grounds are made much more obvious by... Oracle envoys are all gone, and that... That shows you the area. And are... I guess they stay dead. It's kind of nice. Now that means anything for me. Okay. Go in here. You're gonna be anything to find? Nothing new, it seems. Okay. This. Okay. Guess we can put some light on in here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. It's mostly just nothing. Okay. Got to work my way back to Colosseum. There are also going to be some funny gargoyles. That is completely blocked off the ash. Ash one does. My question is, before I take on Gideon and all of the final bosses, I'm wondering as to whether... I don't remember if there's going to be another set of grace that I can just pop myself down at. What is that supposed to mean in this context? What, what do you mean by that? Elaborate on that. Mm. It's pretty. Yeah. Which one? The one about Ash? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I make a lot of those. It... It's subjective. It's subjective, subjective quality. Your mileage may vary. Highly up to individual interpretation. Can you relate? I bet you might be able to relate. We can actually get up on that roof. It's around the area below the Elden Throne. I don't... Oh, there is something over there. That's... Okay, just a hero's room for. I'm wondering if I... Would I have been able to get that in normal lane tell, Or is that exclusive to endgame lane tell? It does interest me that it's got the exact same background music as it was back when it was golden, which... Beyond just being classic FromSoft as asset reu reuse. I don't know, maybe they're trying to say that it's not really that much of a decline. It's, it's creative destruction. We had to burn the urge for to get through. It is interesting that I talked a lot more to Enya this playthrough than I did when I went through the first time on my mage build and just... Did not really engage with much and just try to get to the ending as fast as possible. Which definitely puts a lot more context on a lot of things. So this goes up to the Urchery Sanctuary. Which is a different avenue of approach than you use in the base game. If I jumped down here, could I make that? I bet I could make that. I'm not interested in risking it, especially when I don't have 
any rune arcs to burn, but this actually. So that Radagon statue, and that becomes an America statue. An America statue that becomes a Radagon statue. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, and this just leads over this way then. Okay. And do I have... Okay, I've got Black Flame on right now. This tree trunk being fallen is entirely new. It's not how it was originally. Should hopefully allow me to get through Colosseum related areas more quickly. So I do need to talk to Gold Mask. I need to well, retrieve the Mending Rune of Perfect Order from Gold Mask's dead body. This Miranda flower is rather strong. I I guess I could have used Golden Valve for this. It really does not matter. It if the flower lets you torch it, you torch the flower. So you can see it's constantly just going down because of Oh wow, I did not expect that to have the range it did. And there we are. Are you gonna drop anything of no, probably not. Bunch of things to make perfumes with. Unfortunately, I don't really make perfumes. How sad. Now that everybody and everything is gone, can't even... There are these gladiators who had previously spawned around here who no longer do. Hello there. Got the Mending Rune of Perfect Order. Rune discovered. The other Mending Runes were gestated. Like a pregnancy, this was discovered through philosophy. Used to restore the fractured Elden Ring when brandished by the Elden Lord, a rune of transcendental ideology which will attempt to perfect the Golden Order. The current imperfection of the Golden Order, or instability of ideology, can be blamed upon the fickleness of the gods no better than men. That is the fly in the ointment. Alright. So Corin's bell bearing should theoretically be somewhere around here, maybe atop the Colosseum, if I can even get there. I should be able to. Maybe. But it... It's empty, but it's vast. And it's rather different than it was on first pass. It is funny that a tree... Part of a tree trunk just happens to coincidentally drop down in exactly the right position to make a bridge. It... Very nice of them to do that, I suppose. Not gonna complain. It is... A little contrived, I'd say. This over there is... It's a giant spear. Which was originally the spot where you would get the Bolt of Grand Sacks, but if you are if you miss your chance, you can just miss out on it entirely. Because when it goes to Ashen State, the weapon you would normally pick up here just is no longer there. And it's interesting, because it's a spear that you can use... It's a weapon art allows you to toss a lightning bolt, which is very similar to the lightning spear incantation. But it it's arguably maybe a bit better? Maybe. Okay, a golden sunflower right there. Can't go through here. So presumably to get to this other side, I would need to drop down to that other part using... Can I make that jump? I can. Thank you for allowing me to take a curving jump trajectory. It's nothing like casually violating the laws of physics to make your day better. But, as I was saying, we went down here and got one of those talismans and another tarnished golden sunflower. A lot of those around here for some reason. That over there is Capital of Ash. And the giant dragon carcass that we had to use as a bridge to traverse the area on our first pass is now just buried and kind of decorative. It, it's interesting how much stuff they actually have just lying around. Almost as interesting as how arguably useless most of it is. That's life. So how am I going to manage this? This would allow me to get back to the rampart portion that I came through originally, but before I start the final boss sequence, I would like to consume every small rune item I've got on me, because 
I don't want to rest during sort of gauntlet of three boss encounters, which technically includes four bosses. Well, four different individuals. But depending on if you count name changes as different bosses, even in the same fight, then it would be five different bosses. And if I do things right, I think I could get through all of the fights without having to rest in between. But it would take a bit of maneuvering and a bit of... I'd have to be cautious, and i definitely want to focus on defensive buffs. But I'd already be doing that anyway, especially since I rely very heavily on rune orcs to buff myself, and since they go away on death, I really, really need to avoid dying. It's been an item? No. I thought they were going to say plump sort. In older Souls games, whenever there was an invisible wall or otherwise geometry blocking you from going through a passage that you otherwise might think you'd be able to get through, the message that people would always put down was just fatty. In Elden Ring, they don't have fatty, they have plump sort. I wonder why they changed that specifically, but either way, it's a little different now. Here a big gargoyle walking around down there. If we would get in here, we would need to climb up Dragon's Wing. And that was the Dragon Grand Sax, and the malformed dragon arm we got earlier from that Draconic Tree Sentinel makes reference to Grand Sax, who is that giant dragon who attacked the capital beforehand. How was the breakfast burrito, by the way? Was it good? I hope it was good. So there should be at least one more side of grace around here, I think. Maybe. Hmm. That's actually kind of strange. There were sites of grace here before, and now there simply are not. Okay. By the way, that's definitely the way to get to... Final boss sequence, and oh, they're just dudes. Okay, dudes. Goodbye, dudes. Mm. So can we get to... We can get to the Colosseum. So presumably, Corrin is going to... Start... Molding about how Gold Mask said, Oh, maybe, you know... Golden Order bad. If he's even here. He might try to kill me... Maybe. He wasn't here. Time for fire. Yep. Let's get up to the top near the Colosseum and see what he might have to say. This big castle-like mansion is the Fortified Manor, which, among other things, has a very similar layout to the Round Table Hold, the hub area that we go through most of the game in. But, which is now burning down to nothing. But, we all agree you agree is a rabbit, because this joke is really old and it's not funny anymore. Thank you very much. How are you doing? We are working through the base game of Elden Ring's endgame, and is that Corrin? It is not Corrin. Is Corrin just gone? Okay. I mean this in the nicest way possible. But the most important part of comedy, I'll take that pedantry over the previous pedantry. But I guess, you know, that that is an interesting discussion, actually. What would you say the difference between a rabbit and a bunny is? Because scientifically, they are the same. But it's, I guess you could have a conversation about the difference between denotation and connotation. Yeah, exactly. It's... Are you familiar with the Ship of Theseus thought experiment? Or do I have the opportunity to tell someone a funny story? You can tell me to stop anytime. The Ship of Theseus thought experiment is... Basically the idea of... It refers to... Though I'm actually not sure if he actually rebuilt it in myth. But to the Greek hero Theseus... And the idea that in his original myth he had a boat, as the name suggests. And the idea is basically, if you took a boat and replaced every single component of the boat, just every plank, every hook, every nail, 
Replace it with an identical nail. And... Just... Wait, which one? Toyama Na? She... She voices a lot of other things, too. I was excited to see her voicing Milani. And also kind of surprised that she hadn't voiced anything beforehand. But a lot of... There are a lot of voice actors who also voice animals. I remember... And, you know... Our, our Italian friend is not here right now, so I can bring up Fate. But the voice actress for Saber also voices the funny, sort of weird dog-cat mascot of FGO. Which is amusing. But I remember seeing that the voice for Eevee, the Pokemon Eevee, is the voice actress Yuki Aoi. Who voices a lot of characters, including Lamine, actually. Which is... I played a bit of Let's Go Eevee some time ago. And at that point, I knew that uh, that Yuki Aoi was the voice actress for Eevee. And all I could think the entire time was just... I can't believe... I can't believe that this is... <laughs> this is her. Let's get some buffs up before I fight this stupid gargoyle. Is this a normal gargoyle or a Black Blade's Kindred? Okay, this looks to be Black... No, I think this is a normal gargoyle. Okay, cool. I... How did that not hit? Okay. Weird. Um, okay. Very, very strange. Right, we have to take this off. Dodge. Come on. Really? Okay. Keep on... Okay, and we need, oh please, I don't want a defensive buffs up, but I, oh please, I... okay, can we, stop dodging me, I swear, you are the worst, don't, ah, uh, please, what is up with this, I... okay, slam and another, or not, uh, really? Really? I... Okay, I can't stand this garbage anymore. I just... Why are you so evasive? How did that not hit? What? Okay. How did that not hit? Really? I... Okay. Oh, well, alright. What in the goddamn... Dodge! Okay, heal, heal. What in the goddamn... I hate this stupid game. The big issue was just it switched to the twin blade and became a lot faster. I hate this stupid chungus life. Guess we need to go form a rune arc. Me. All right. America. And the Silver Scarab. Albinoric Headpiece. Oh, right, we need to put that thing back on because I took it off when I was fighting. God's gonna do it. Stupid. You know, I thought this would be a little simpler. That was the one thing that could really slow things down. Dying. Okay. Put this on. And that's gonna be as high as we can get our item discovery. So let's go back to the cave where I kill rats. The rat killing cave. But for me, I am actually pretty excited for Milani just in general. Because she's gonna be the game's first forward vaporized DPS, which is new. Well, the first competent forward vaporize DPS. Because... You know, there are other examples. The big one is that if you want to be really silly, you can literally use Barbara. But the joke writes itself. But to actually... And, yep, that's Abby. I... Not 
being able to poise break that gargoyle was kind of ridiculous. I'll say that much. But Milani's whole deal is going to be a small number of hits dealt, meaning that she can actually wait for other characters to apply pyro and vape those couple of big hits for massive damage. Because at base, even without any elemental mastery built, vaporize when it's a hydro on pyro as opposed to pyro on hydro is just two times damage, which is really, really good. But when is it going to be a rune arc that's just a normal rune? Okay, cool. Not really. When I see an item dropping, that's my cue. Just give me another rune arc, please. I'm begging. Keep on going, give me a rune arc. Give me a rune arc. Thank you. Nope. We're gone. When we see the particles streaming out of it, that's when an item drops, and then I can see whether it's a rune arc or not. We have. Oh. 218 item discovery. Which will increase by a little under 25% that... Oh, nice, there we go, we got one. If I got my arcane all the way to 99. It is interesting that that scales linearly. And it makes sense, it's not really a, an overpowered stat to allow you to scale, but... Alright, cool. Let's get this back. Take this off, put other things that aren't crap back on. We want Urge Reese Favor plus two. And Dragon Twist Great Shield. And I can take this off, put that back on, and go back to Phony Little Ash and Capital and pray that I actually kill that stupid gargoyle this time. That was embarrassing performance. I did not mean to go to Underground Roadside. I did not mean to go to Underground Roadside. Okay. Alright. Alright. Um. Okay. So this is where all those omen are. Actually, you know what? Just for fun. Let's lions call this idiot to death. Thank you. One! Ooh, pancakes. Two. And one, two, big slam. Okay. So right, it's Window Capital of Ash. This is the only place we can really go right now. Hopefully we'll get another set of grace before the Gideon fight, but I am not counting on that. Forsaken Depths and Window Catacombs. Neutral Forsaken, Frenzied Flame Prescription, but almost... Frenzied Flame Prescription is locked past Morgoth, which is why I had to wait so long. It is really funny that there was that tiny area that was just a little platforming section at the start of Deep Root Depths that I had to wait until endgame basically to access. Just because I waited so long to fight Morgoth and a decent amount of time after that to actually go to Frenzied Flame Prescription. That's life. Go back through here, we kill the stupid gargoyle. It's simple, we kill the gargoyle. Not really. Flask should be good. I'm not even sure if I used it last time, but we will evaluate the situation as it comes to us. Uh, my question is just, what fight I actually want to have the flask for probably Horolu actually. Horolu is probably going to be Godfrey slash Horolu is probably going to be the one that I really need stance breaks for. We'll see. Rata Beast is cheesable. It's not something I'm really worried about right now. Here we are. Let's buff up. 
Let's see if they urge me. That's a smithing stone, ancient dragon smithing stone, I believe. And hello, hello. That was originally the door that we were able to unlock at normal gold capital. Hi there, hello. But me. And hyper armor is pretty nice. Thanks. Slam. And slam. Ooh, nice. There we go. Which means hit the head for a massive critical. Awesome. Okay, cool. And slam. Dot. Okay. All right. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, all right. Hmm. It's got about dodge. Can I? Thanks. Dodge. One more. One more hit. One more hit and it's so big. That's the problem. Hard to actually tell where hits actually come from. And please, you've got to be kidding me. Can I? There we are. Finally. Stupid. And literally nothing dropped. Okay. Can't go back through this area at all. I think if I recall correctly, if I hadn't killed the Langdale Knight who drops Gravelstone Seal here, which actually did use a decent effect to boost Lightning Spear damage against Loretta. I guess I'll use it again against Coral Boo because he is weak to Lightning. It would also allow me to keep distance in that fight, which would be welcome. Okay. Let's find another side of grace, presumably, before have to take on Gideon. Right over here should be a normal ancient dragon smithing stone. No, it's a somber ancient dragon smithing stone. Not bad. Two of those right now, which I've used a lot of them, actually. It means that I'm going to want to wait a bit before I use another. I need to, and that door is actually closed now, so even if he managed to get onto that ledge, which you're not supposed to be able to even do, he wouldn't be able to get back up anyway. Alright, cool. This, oh, huh. Okay, come on. Can I? Uh-huh. Can get over here. Well done. Time for Tarnished. Okay, so I think... We're going to have to start from around here anyway. Defense and stance are definitely going to be good options, but... Let's just use a bunch of runes. Let's try to see if I can get any more levels before this all gets started. It's almost certainly going to have to be... Gideon. Gideon. In terms of what I want for this fight, I need a spell setup that will work for me. Black Flames will be good for Horolu. Flame Protect me is not necessary. We'll take Flame Grammy Strength. Mind Fortification, good. <coughs> then Lightning Spear is good. Nothing that I don't need should be taken. Pest Threads. So all this should be... Oh, this should be everything I need for these flights. My question is just... <clears throat> how many flasks would end up needing... Oh, that's right, we need... Inescapable Frenzy 2. That's right. Should be good for the first night. It's just this. I don't think this actually boosts frenzied flame incantations. I don't think it boosts inescapable frenzy. Escapable frenzy only scales with faith. Spell buff only affected by faith. Hmm. That's not good. God Slayer Seal actually should be decent. 
Let me see. Sacred Seal. Fire Scorpion and Flame Shredding Crack Tour. Does not boost Inescapable Frenzy. Huh. It's very strange. Wait, it says it is boosted. I don't know what to trust. Whatever. Let's... This is at maximum, but my question is... Inescapable Frenzy only scales with... Faith. Then in theory, God Slayer Seal would actually be a better option. And I could test that out. On... The enemies in the Guardian's Garrison. It's crazy how this looks. Check out my bolstering materials. I've got a good amount of most of these. I just need two more of those. And no, I need a lot of everything between one to four and two more eight. So we can feed another bell bearing two of these twin maiden husks. That's nice. Smithing minor. Oh, so it abbreviates them. Not smithing stone or somber stone. Okay, go for picker. Go for ghost form. And then, sure, we'll take Gori. Get a lot of all of these. Take just a couple. And then, 12. 12. 12. 11. Take our God Slayer Seal, which we should have on hand. We do. We're all the ones that are used to buff certain spell damage types. Do have. What right now is. Right now, this is going to be my best faith only option. DLC and DLC and Dry Leaf will actually be a bit better, but. It's nothing. Catalyst. Let's see how much I got here. Oh, right, because that was buffed. That's right, that's part of it. I think it should still be a bit better. Maybe. Maybe. Theory. This would be at about... 159 versus 162, and this would be at about... Even less than that. This should definitely be my best option. Let's buff this thing up and see how far we can take it. Going up by a decent amount per upgrade. So we're chilling. My question is just... What seal will handle this the best? You know what? Ancient Dragon. We're going for it. And it's noticeably less damaging than... This guy, but... about 100% less incant scale, which means about a third less damage in theory at base, depending on how scaling works on this thing, but we'll see. Gotta test out some of this stuff. First, let's see if Frenzied Flame makes a difference. Lots of dudes here, and we still got Grace Pass, even though really left and now that there are no sudden there are no there's no guidance in ashen capital which is very interesting because godfrey when you fight him gets guidance to you that in theory he's the one receiving guidance and that you were basically supposed to do his dirty work which is funny oh hello hi there all right let's get this started Try this inescapable frenzy. And oh, okay. Oh, well, alright. See how much damage this deals. And. That's. 1251. Take this off. I did not mean to do that. Come on. Oh, I did not mean to find you. 51 versus and oh goodness, I don't like that. 
Let's just zap you. Oh, nice. Very good damage. So without Frenzied Flame Seal, how much will this do? Should be another Flame Guardian that I can hopefully test this out on. Yeah, they're the only enemies in the game that function like Tarnished. As in player characters, which means... Well, other than NPC Invaders and Gideon. Let's just see if this deals less damage. Hi there, hello, and... Thanks. It deals exactly the same damage. Okay. Cool. Did not mean to do that. So in that case, my question is... Would the God Slayer still deal more damage? Maybe I guess I could test whether... Fire boosting options would also boost it. We'll see. 1251 versus... If it deals more damage, we'll know. It's gonna be easy enough to tell. Come on, come on. Thank you. Get in here. And oh, alright. Thanks. And of course there's a fire monk there. Gotta be kidding me. Thanks. I okay. Come on, come on. Die, die. Got a good amount of Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, I'm not stuck. It's in a poor position. Thanks. Oh, and of course. Thorn Boy is coming up too. Okay, alright. Enjoy that. Oh, okay. 12 for 51 versus... Oh, okay. How much damage will... God Slayer's Seal do? Any more? Any less? Let's see. Hi there! And... It deals very, very slightly less. But not all that much less. And the final thing to test out is going to be, which does seem to confirm it only scales up with faith. That doesn't help. Let me just see real quick. If I put on a bunch of fire boosting equipment, or incantation boosting equipment, how is this going to work in comparison? Got... Fire Scorpion, Brooms with Fire, Shimmers with Magic, Sparks with Lightning. I guess they could have said, could have said Glows with Holiness. It didn't feel like it. Okay. Try this inescapable frenzy out on the other Guardian. See how that's going to work. Okay. You're right over here. Get right over here. Hopefully kill. And latch on. And... Oh, wow. It deals a good amount more damage. Awesome. Okay. So buffs do apply. Which means... This is going to be a good way to take Gideon down. It's nice. <clears throat> so I think... For Gideon, it's especially since Gideon is very weak to madness, as he went kind of cray cray. Inescapable Frenzy is going to be the way. Then for Godfrey, phase one, before he becomes Horolu, we will use our Poke Sword, we'll use God's Constitutor. Phase two, I think we'll use Lightning Spear. Stitcher would actually be decent though. It's an idea. Uh, but he's also very threatening. Staying away would... Honestly, honestly... I'd probably still be better off using the Poke Sword just to break his stance. He's actually weakest to Pierce than Slash. Oh, so actually... Bloodhound's Fang... Uh, okay. Okay, right, because he takes all his clothes off, so he's weaker there. Okay. 
You can take Lightning Spear off, so the only spells I'll actually be using for offense are Inescapable Frenzy and... My Ashes of War. So we want Fire on... No, we want a Colt. Colt's still good. Is that on a Radagon? We don't need a Lightning Spear then, so... Physical, for damage, for anti-holy, for taking down. Well, for Elden Beast, I'm going to want a quick kill. So Flame Brant would probably be better anyway. Just buff up as Radagon's dying, and then Pest Threads. This flask, I... This might be dangerous, but I think honestly... In that case, I should take a big healing spell. Take a big healing spell with me. Maybe. Some more for emergencies. I don't predict I'll need more than nine, even in the worst possible case. So let's put a put a heal spell on just in case. That's oh, but God Slayer Seal would be. Decent for that. Is the highest effect heal I can do. I can use Lord's Heal. Okay. That Lord's Heal is... Blessing of the Ur Tree. On my God Slayer Seal, I've got 221 adjust. Lord's Heal does... 4.2 times Faith in Cant Scaling. That would be... About 930 or so. Blessing of the Urgery. How much is that going to do in comparison? That's actually much better. Okay. Well, a little bit better and use, use Old Lords to heal kind of slowly. It's even better. Well, there is... No time like the present. Let's get that on and what could I actually wear? We can wear this silly Drake Knight helmet. Oh, that's actually really stupid looking. Let's wear the funny the funny Iron Casa. Especially since that is a bit like Shibariri. Who also carries the flame of frenzy within him. All we gotta do is get our buffs up, and this is how I want to. That's a good set of buffs to put on. See how we use that when we take down Godfrey. It's gonna be Stitcher Phase 1, Bloodhunt's Fang Phase 2. That'll be nice. Okay. Let's get this flight phase started. Well, first we gotta go up the elevator. If I'm going to be going and doing all this, this might be a good time to take a quick bathroom break. Just so that I don't have to worry about anything else other than the actual fight. Yeah, oh, you can see Gideon right there. He'll monologue for a bit and we'll just be able to buff up while he talks and then slam him, but... So I'll be right back. BRB. Bathroom break. BRP.
Guess who's back? Me. Okay. So the tank is empty. I think we can make this work. Let's do this funky thing. So I'm to absolutely obliterate Gideon. Oh, but I... No, I'm stupid. That's right, I gotta go back and... Pff, burn all my roots first. That's right. Yeah, let's try to get at least one more level up before this fight happens. Ooh, ooh. None of them are going to be especially useful. Well, whatever. So this... Need a little bit more. I honestly don't think that if I burned every rune other than this in my inventory that I'd be able to use anything else. Let's get a bit more endurance. Nice. Can I put something heavier on now? Guess what? We can! Cool. Kevin hat. So next one for the next level, that'd be... 30,000 or so, which means... Let's use all these. How many is that? It's a decent way there. We can get one level. One more level. Put it in... Put it in focus. Okay. Oh, goodness. This is... kind of worrying. Maybe I could actually get a good amount more, maybe. This? Hmm. I don't think I could actually get two levels out of this, though. Well, I don't know. We used all those little itty-bitty baby runes, maybe. But I think it's not like I'm really in a position where I need a bunch of levels right now, anyway. Let's put... Mine's good. Mine is decent. Yeah, okay. So right now we're at 40, which is... We can pretty reasonably accept all the FP restoration from a single flask. And now we're at... With that rune arc up, we're almost at 40 in every stat. It's just... When you go through the game really, really thoroughly... And I never really did grinding for runes... Sometimes I'd grind for rune arcs and got some runes along the way, but it was killing literal rats in an early game area. I don't think that counts. Hopefully. But as I was saying... We're doing decently. The most I maybe did was just whenever I saw a bunch of animals, I killed all the animals because I'm bloodthirsty. And also it gave me a decent amount of animal materials, like their bones and such. Which I was able to use for crafting arrows and the like. Basically, if I ever ran from a fight, I went back and won that fight later. And usually I didn't run in the first place, so that's what the situation is. Blessing of Eritrea would be nice, but I don't think I really need it here. Probably not. Let's conserve a little here. Hello. Hello. Hi, Giddy. That's a bit crass. To become Elven Lord. To sad state of affairs. I commend your spirit, but alas. None. Let's get this started. Queen Marika has high hopes for us. That we come to Jesus' trouble. There we go. We can just. Grab, walk him, kind of. Oh, okay. Oh, you're stronger than I expected. Oh, baby. Okay. Dodge, dodge. Can I... Uh, wait, what? Huh? Really? Okay. That was actually rather unexpected. Can I... Dodge. Grab back onto you. Let's try that one more time. Thanks. I... Oh, well... Okay. Cool. Did not expect that. Okay. Can I? I what? What in the? 
Okay. It was a fun idea. You know, I could definitely take him down. But it's not gonna be with an escapable frenzy. And you know what that means? It means getting another rune arc. Awesome. And I thought I had a good thing going. It... He's not as weak to that as he used to be. He used to be incredibly weak to... Madness. Yeah, it is... Suffice it to say, they buffed him a little. Just a little bit. Let's put on the things that let me farm and pray. And I thought... I thought I was doing so well for myself. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Good things come to those who assume, I suppose. Put Great Jar back on and... I guess... I should put all my buffs on and focus on... Taking them out. I think, honest to goodness, God's in Stitcher is still going to do the trick best of error. Getting it off near as a boss. Weak to... Weak to Pierce. Okay. And Lightning. You know, Lightning would probably be the best option. May eh, no, it's gonna be Pierce. It has to be Pierce. There's no way it's anything other than just... Spamming Impaling Thrust. From decent upper range to just interrupt all of his attacks, all of his spells, make sure he can't meaningfully do anything to me. That's nice. But it is kind of funny how good Impaling Thrust is, considering how early on in the game you get it. The fact that you can get it from Weaving Peninsula and that it remains arguably the best sort of piercing weapon Ash of War for a while. Probably forever, honestly. Because piercing weapons don't get Lion Squad. And Impaling Thrust is fast, goes through shields, deals high damage. Oh, lucky us. They really want us to hurry up, don't they? Okay. Well, back to Lane Dome. Okay. Lane Dome, capital of Ash. And that means putting... Well, we can just put Lightning Spear on in place of Inescapable Frenzy. That's more than fine. That also means we want to put Gravelstone Seal on there instead. Should be good. Let's replace that with this. Lightning Spear. Okay. Let's put on some things that are a bit better. Th I think... Faithful and Flux should still be a good option here. We can zap him down nice and fast. The sad thing is, now that we've died to him once, he's not going to sit there and monologue anymore. He's just going to try to blow us up. Classic. And is this... That's still heavy load. Medium load. Yeah, we'll take the Casa anyway. Alright, and all right. Maybe other affinity options would be good too. I don't know. We're just gonna go for it. I might have oh and this is is this a runok? Yeah, okay, cool. I'll take that. But hopefully I shouldn't need it right now. We're gonna need we're gonna buff up. We're gonna take Gideon down. We don't have the ability to just shoot in while he monologues this time, but hopefully we'll still be okay. Fingers crossed. Okay. Okay. Pull that lever. <clears throat> it's funny seeing the horns clip through the hat. It's silly. Then got 
two seals, one with a little strap in the left hand, and the right hand a completely formless one. Okay, let's do it. Time for fun. Let's try to beat all three final boss encounters in a row. Okay. Traverse the mist. Here a gold might have been a good option, but oh, that was a silly choice on your end. Thanks. I okay. Dodge. Ooh. All right. Cool. Nice and far away. Ah, and yep, you're not dodging at all. Because we can spam this pretty freely. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Oh, when are those swords just going to disappear then? Nice and stock. And no more of that. Okay, Gideon. Enjoy that. Oh, well. What? Did we win? I don't think we won. <laughs> you know, at least we're close. That. Yep. In this one, you don't get free a free kill. So we are using that rune arc. Okay. Do all three in a row. Can manage this. Oh, well, actually, we can't. Let's try that again. I had to buff up before I went in, but instead of that, I was stupid. Classic. If I put on barrier gold... Should probably put on their real gold. Some biggest threats are his magic damage spells. I'm not using any other body buffs here. Yeah. Uh, let's try one more time. Shouldn't matter all that much. Smart about this. Okay. Hello there. Hello there. Okay. Get this thing started. You're not gonna dodge, so continue being stupid. Oh, Rykard's Rancor. I hate that. Deeply hate that. I, okay. Come on. And... Mm, another one. Dodge. Take that. Me one Comet. And... Okay. Oh, and that's when your full dealio activated. So that's it. Try your best. Let's take this. Snap. I reject my humanity. All right. Scepter the All-Knowing, All-Knowing Home, Armor, Gauntlets, and Greaves. Let's activate this, but no resting for us. It's on to the next. This is... It's just the Urge Free Sanctuary, like before. You know? I want to see what else is around here. Check out the description of some of that. Greaves sat with countless eyes and ears. Knowledge begins with the recognition of one's ignorance, the realization that the search for knowledge is unending. When Gideon glimpsed into the Wolf Queen Merica, he shuddered in fear at the end that should not be. A scepter in the form of a hand grasp and a pearl seems your weapon of Sir Gideon off near the all-knowing. The pearl stands for the world, the heavens, and an eye. It is representing the many forms of knowledge never fully attainable, even knowing that all-knowing's hand grasps for it unique skill, knowledge above all. It's a scepter to manifest the realm of all the all-knowing, enemy magic, and holy damnation to reduce for all within the area, including the caster. So those are arguably the damage types most associated with intelligence as a stat, magic, and holy. So what else is around here? So this... That just falls off now, doesn't it? Maybe... Maybe not. Hmm. So there is no sanctuary around here anymore. I just wonder where Corrin's bell bearing is now. Now that Corin has killed his master, brother Corin, Corin, 
The Corin Window Ashen Capital, where? Base of the giant spiral spear. Okay, where he was sitting. We'll, we'll talk to him after we become Elden Lord, I guess. Because he had to kill Gold Mask. He just had to. Maybe he did it for the vine. Okay. Gotta get back up top. Shouldn't be any enemy in there. We need to re-equip. Set that allows us to wear heavy armor. No, no, great jar. Truce favor. Dragon quest, great shield. And then, put that on. Oh, but I, I used the buff when I didn't need to. Well, I guess we'll just do this without the buff flask. That's fun. Shouldn't really need it all that much anyway. Okay. It's on. There we have it. If we put the sword on, that's it heavy now. Alright, fun. Let's see how far this can take us. Oh, hello. What you gonna say? He, he is returned. The Lord has returned at long last. Our very first Lord, Godfrey, to brandish the Elden Ring once more. Hmm. So that'll be another obstacle in our way, Godfrey himself. Previously, in the spot where we fought Gideon, this was the arena for Godfrey. Well, Godfrey is an elven sh as a golden shade, sort of invader type creature, but he did not have any kind of phase transition like he will here now. So let's get that started. Got a decent amount of runes from that fight. Not even enough for a not even enough for a level. That is interesting. Good way around again. There should be a different incantation in there. It's previously got blessing of the Urdry in America's bedchamber over there, but now it should be presumably Urdry heal. Not presumably. I know it's Urdry heal. I could have gotten up here by taking this route. I didn't though. Oh well. And that would have been sealed off because the Gideon fight had all those fog walls active. That's where we got the Golden Order of Principia before from that guy. Oh! That was nice. Doesn't make a crazy difference, but still nice. Okay. We got a few red flasks. We are okay, though. Alright. So we can activate this. Again, we're not going to rest. And take our Urdrio. There we have it. And that... Can't use that right now. One of the ancient Urtree incantations heals a vast amount of HP for the caster and nearby allies. Hold to continue praying, delay activation. Urtree once flourished with abundance, yet it was only for a fleeting moment, such as the course of all life. Urtree heal. Should be six times scaling or so? About as much. 4.204 nearby. Lord's heal is... 2.1 to allies, so it it's about two-thirds of the total amount for that, which is not what it was like before. The healing ratio for allies on Urtree Heal is better. It's similar to the description of Blessings. Blessing the Urtree 2 and Melina does not have anything to say to us here because Melina is not here anymore. She didn't burn off, we did save her, but she abandoned us for accepting the Flame of Frenzy, even though I did eventually reject it. Tis the cost of doing the right thing. Okay. Let's take this. Here we go. Alright, let's go in. It's in for Godfrey.
That was the boss we fought here beforehand, who is kind of a rival character to us. His son, presumably. That ghost on his back is Sirosh, the beast region. Warrior, spurned by the grace of gold, and just like him, in beta versions, he was basically a great granddad. Close at hand. In beta versions, his motivations for fighting us were also more explicitly about being reunited with Merica, who was once his wife. Which is not really some that made it in here. I am returned. Good old broken axe. When we fought him as a golden shade, his axe is actually whole. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Big strong guy. But that's not true. This Placidius Axe is presumably the actual first. I dodge. Can I? Thanks. Ooh, okay. okay. Ooh, alright. We have very good stance. Oh, okay. Ten Ooh, okay. Um, alright. Can I? Dodge. Can I? Uh, dodge. Can I? There we go. We got the stance break. He is rather strong. Okay. Thanks. Dodge. Okay. Do okay. Dodge. Do dodge. Oh, well, we dodged the wrong way. Okay. There we okay, and can I... There we go. Stance break again, and let's face transition. Here we go. It's gonna get a bit bloody in here now. I can see. It's familiar materialize. Thou didst me good service. Sirosh. Not a great way to go out, I'd say. Having your neck snapped with it by your jaw. But the presence of that beast digging into him was what prevented him from using his full power, which is not a full power that requires weapons. It'd be funny if he fought us with his stand, though. What's interesting is that Sirash's name in the file is actually Malakath. I've given thee Raises the question of what Malakath we know originally was. It's so fun how he just roars. He fights like a combination of a sumo wrestler and an American pro wrestler. He actually does a power bomb. It's one of his attacks. Bro is crazy. Okay, uh, okay. That would be the power bomb. But would have been, except, oh well. Alright, oh well, okay. Can I dodge? Oh, ooh, okay. Dodge, dodge, can I heal? Dodge, can I? Okay. Ooh, huh. Not great. Alright, okay. Can I dodge? Oh, what? Oh, oh. There is the power bomb. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Can I. Heal. I, okay. Let's just run away and get some buffs back up in here. Thanks. Okay. Alright. Ah. This is definitely the way. Yeah. This is the top one. Okay. Thanks. And dodge. Dodge. Okay. That was going to be his grab attack. Okay. Huh. 
All right, and get some of this down and we buff. Okay, and okay, I dodge. Ah, please. Let's black flames protection in here. Oh well. All right. Thanks. It okay. Hmm. Let's heal, heal, and thanks. Cool. Flame. Oh, oh well. All right. Dodge, 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 dodge. Oh well. Well. Thought I'd have it. That's the end of that idea. Okay. It was a nice idea to try, but honest to goodness, I could have done it if I hadn't screwed up and used the Flask of Wondrous Physic instead of that foul foot. Because if I'd had that flask, it would have been there for the entire fight, which would have made it a lot easier, both just by giving more defense and giving more, more ability to stance break him. Oh. Didn't happen. Hello. Let's give him some innards. No, I haven't changed my mind. I'll begin my journey once I'm ready to go. As a warrior jar. In search of glory. Me one glory. Wow. Alexander's guts. The big jar warrior who accompanied us. That's on my warrior. That's on my journey. Thank you, cuz. Okay. I'm a warrior jar. So I need to be strong. I can really have them. Right? Yeah. I understand. I'll get strong. Strong enough. Mm. I deserve to have uncles in So the jars are full of flesh and sort of absorb the powers of I those put aside. When I set out, warriors are supposed to work So you're going to give me the talisman or? Why? Cuz. And thanks for everything. I'll never forget you. Cuz. Keep saying that. Very British. I'll never forget. Okay, so if I reload the area, I think that'll cause him to weave the talisman behind companion jar. Boost the power of throne jar items, and he's gone. Okay. Just a regular item. Companion jar, talisman given by the jars to their friends, raises potency of throne jars. The jars are brought to life by human flesh and blood. They are all rather kindly folk. Perhaps they were made to be better than their innards. I guess so. So I suppose if he's at the base of Grand Sax's spear, we can talk to Corin then. Before I get another rune arc and try those fights again. Alright. Okay then. Should be around there. Can tell us why he killed Goldmask. Said I know. Because he was a, a heretic. By the base. Should be. See around there, or. I don't see his bell bearing. Question is. Because he can't have. If he had left it behind already, would have seen the item icon, but. It's not where he is. Here again, or here again. Is he here, or not? Check, is that him? It seems to be. That's not him. Yeah, that's not him. So where where did he go? I'll just check. Of course the gargoyle is back. Brother Corin. Wendell Ashen Capital. Buy that ball. Would be. It's more over this way. Guess more where it originally was. I. He's just not here. It's actually very strange. So we followed him all this way, but he's just not around. I, you know, don't imagine he'd be in mountaintops, but that's just really weird. I guess I could check. Not like it'd take me a long time. I suppose it's technically possible that 
I'd have to sort of reload his last location to make him move. But Gold Mask himself is gone. That's what's weird about this whole business. Hermit Merchant, not Corin. Just makes me think of Corin from Fire Emblem. I mean, Super Smash Brothers. I never played Fates. I got Awakening and played through a little bit of it. I was too perfectionist and kept thinking that nothing was everything I did. I ended up thinking, oh, this is too easy. I can't do this. But Lunatic Plus was too much, so I was just sort of, okay, maybe I won't. In retrospect, probably saved my soul that I didn't actually really get into Fire Emblem. There's this meme I saw some time ago that was just a stereotypical picture of what people think the gates of heaven look like. And it just said, good thing I never played a Fire Emblem game. Rainbow Stone from the Demi-Human Chief. Okay, whatever. It's interesting how they stop being bosses very quickly. There he is. Okay. Oh well. Oh, okay. He hasn't moved yet, but he's already dead. So we have to move him. Okay. So if I... Corrin's here, but if I teleport here, roll the area, he should be gone. Back to Landell. Which was his last location, but it's not the same as his current location. Okay. So, let's just see if he's over there now. I'd hope. Then I can grab one more rune arc and blitz. Final boss down. Final bosses down. Should be over here, I think. It... This is a bit annoying. He's just not here? That's... very strange. So I guess I need to talk to him again, or maybe... Maybe since I already got the Mending Rune of Perfect Order, he just does not move to the capital. That... I suppose that could be the case. And technically, the ending of the quest line is using the Mending Rune, so it's not as if I've failed to get the end of the quest line yet, technically, but you know, there's only one ending I can get per playthrough, so... I can't get that achievement if I pick another, and, well, alright. To be fair, there are a lot of other endings that... There is that other file that technically is at the end of the game, ready to mend the Elden Ring, that I just never actually rolled credits on. Didn't feel like it. So... Let's just go over and see if he's still there. Might have had to do that to move him. But it seems like he's gone now, which... Okay, so he leaves his stuff over here. One spellbearing foil and robe. With a holy glow. Robe of Corn the Cleric. Even after exile, Corn refused to recant his prophecies, and for this he was blessed with the guidance of grace. So then the cartwheel drape on his neck is stripped as a reminder that true guidance awaits those with iron wills, those with unwavering faith. Okay. I wonder if he has any lines for... If you actually take him to Lanetel. Oh, if the tonic was not offered. Okay. If the tonic was offered, he stays. Oh, it's you. I've finally come to understand. The Master was nothing more than a madman, enchanted by a vain and ruinous delusion. He rejected the perfection of the Golden Order, seeking to supplant our glorious faith was his own. Could there be a more pitiable comedy? 
We're good at the culmination of perfection burning before our very eyes. Ha 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 ha. Okay. Interesting. Actually killed or found dead. Flail and sacred seal, but he doesn't use offensive incantations. Hmm. Okay. Burn the earth without reaching Altus, meaning he never leaves the whole die when the round table erupts into flame. Okay. No taps at the giants without passing through the plateau. Or you could do that just by not activating grace in the plateau. So the idea of fighting through without oh, resting is there's no reason to bother with that at this point. We can just do this normally. How sad. I suppose. Put on our talismans. Take down some of you. Hello there. Thank you. Hmm. Allow me to maintain myself. I just need my buffs back. That's all I'm asking for. Yeah, slashing for things. Well, actually, honestly, he's fast enough. I'd probably be better off just using Impaling Thrust anyway. Probably. Use that one weapon for the entire fight. And it might do a little less damage, but be a lot more reliable than that. That's what matters right now. Well, I... I don't know, actually. I don't even know. If I have good plays... Stance damage... Damage in Elden Ring. A fully charged heavy deals. Curved greatsword. Hat deals. Charged heavy deals 33. Which. It's slow. Bloodhound's Fang would still be the more evasive and flexible option. The question is just. How switching it out would work mid-fight. It, it wouldn't be all that troublesome, but still. Well, we'll see how things go. It's just one more rune arc and I can bring this all home. One more rune arc. I can bring this all home. Okay. Actually, maybe when I get the stance break... Against... Godfrey phase one, that would actually be an opportunity to switch my weapon out. Eh, I... It, it's not that deep. Four to tank a power bomb or something. Question is just... Reapplying my buffs in phase two. Because I could always just use Old Lord's Talisman. That might actually be the way to go. But that would mean not being able to cook Great Jar. I'm having to switch something out, and I don't know how I feel about that. It, it's all about having the right... There we go. Okay, cool. Pop this back on, and go back to Queen's Bedchamber. Okay. So, we've done everything here. The wiki said that Tonic of Forgotfulness did not do anything for Corrin, but clearly it does. So, who knows? Take off most of these. Yep, this is all I'm going to need. In that case, honest to goodness, maybe I prefer Old Lords to It's decent. Actually, very, very good. Prefer Old Lords to Urge Free Favor. That doesn't make all that much difference, so. Maybe worth it to try Old Lords Talisman. That gives us about a minute and a half on our buffs, which is rather nice. It's worth thinking about. Let's back on. 
the one I use, and wow, that's still okay. Oh, but that takes it to heavy. Interesting. Hmm. In that case, I'm still probably better off with reduced favor. Okay. So that makes it so this is now still medium. Okay, let's find my buffs. Use this too. Golden Bell. Black Flames Protection. And we should be good to go. And he's just here now. And my runes are all the way over there. Alright. Cool. Oh well. Hi there. And... okay. Okay. Alright. Sub and... oh. Interesting. Oh, what? Okay. There we are. Even if we did a bit of a trade there. This is nice. Stab and dodge. Thanks. One, two, and oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, all right. Thanks. All right. Mm -hmm. Can I? You know what? Opportunity. Opportunity comes a knocking. Let's. Oh, please. Let's actually use this as a buff. Opportunity. Thanks. Put all this stuff back on. Dodge. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, not. Well, never mind. Golden Vow. Black Flames Protection. He's much slower here. Good stuff. Dodge. Dodge. Oh, well. Okay. Heal, heal. And. Uh, Black Flames Protection. Okay. Should be good. There we are. Okay. We need to heal up ASAP. Okay. And dodge. Can I slam. Slam. Oh, well, I not expect that. Dodge. Dodge. Oh, well. Probably jump would have been better there. Can I dodge. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. And thank you. And... There we oh, okay. Okay. Can I oh, well, alright. No. Jump, and... I oh, well. One quick hit. There we go. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not sure if I agree. He's a lot of cheese there. Alright. Remembrance of Horolu. Back at the Elden Throne. Remembrance of the warrior Horolu hewn into the Earth Tree. Power of its name unlocked by the finger reader who is great, great banding of runes. When Godfrey, first Elden Lord, was robbed of his grace, coming tarnished, he took with him his kinfolk and weft the lands between. After the long march of the tarnish came to an end, Godfrey divested himself of kingship, coming a simple warrior once more. So now... It's time for real fun. You want... You know, actually... Let's just go full balls to the wall. Taking flame, Grammy strength, and will of any defensive buffs. Got threads for phase two. Okay. Should work, still. We need that hammer now. That's what we're doing. This goes in here. My question is if I switch to... No, no, it doesn't just switch like that. That's sad. Let's get a couple more levels before this all starts. Arcane. Well. I know that's... 146, because I guess there's a bit of rounding down that isn't shown and rounding up the other way. With this, this is... Yeah. 151. Good scaling. And on my Golden Order Seal, we got 318 in can scaling right now. A level it would be.
321. Okay. I think if we need 30, we need about 19. We could probably make this work. Get one more level out of this. Just one. That's all I'm asking for. Put that into intelligence. Make that a little bit stronger. It. We've gotten rather strong. This should probably be enough. I hope. At least. Very, very close to enough. We need about a little over 2,500 more. So, 70s would be good. Let's do it. One more measly level. Level 200. When I beat this game initially, I was around level 110 or so. That's how much you get just going through like this. Thoroughly. 323, so... Running's a bit different, but... Here we are. Let's make this happen. A lot of buffs. Should be fun. Boost my stance. Damage. Blessing of the Urgery. Golden Vow. Well, grab me. It's the best 30 seconds of my life. Okay. It's a golden light. Okay. Mm, love the timing on that. That might decay. Maybe. Mm. We should be fine. And finally, we get to meet Mariko ourselves. Also, we get to meet her hammer. Even better. Crucified on a rune arc and with this weird red and gold. It's more like Death and Death. It's not exactly like, well, the rune arc itself is more of a primordial reddish gold. That you have on crucible stuff. It's interesting. Let's see what happens. Oh. And what emerges is not Merica. See the gold splintering through the handle of the hammer. And the golden hair is slowly becoming the Rat of Radagon. This broken shadowy arm. Hmm. Hello. Hey look, it's the main menu music. What is this, a Kirby game? Father. And inside him, the Elden Ring itself. Okay. Let's get this started. Oh, you are very stance breakable. Yeah, this is kind of sad. <laughs> okay. Not. It was that easy. Let's buff back up. We skipped <laughs> all of his attacks, really. He has a crazy grab where he hits you with a hammer. Big attack where he hits the ground three times to make the pattern of the Elden Ring. None of that mattered. We stance broke him and just pounded him into the ground. It... When I first fought him on my mage build, he was real tough. He eats mages for breakfast. So Radagon's body is being submerged into this weird black primordial ooze to be transformed into a sword. Again, probably not the nicest way to go out. <clears throat> Oh, alright. 
This is the Elden Beast. And before we could see the hollow on the inside of the tree, but now this is transformed into a interstellar realm. And now we're listening to the other part of the main menu music. Hello. He actually is the horse here. I won't though. Don't grant me strength and best threads. All right. Use the horse to get on faster and cannot. Okay, thanks. Can I? Oh well, not really. Okay and dodge. Okay. Best threads. Oh my goodness, it melts you. Absolutely melts you. Okay. Well, horse is dead. That's fine. Sorry, Torrent. Dodge and this should be Elden Ring attack, maybe? Maybe. Yep, there we go. Cool. When grant me. Get our pest threads out. Should be. Coming through, we'll just jump that ourselves. Okay. And you should be coming up over here. And there's just out with the threads. Oh well. Okay. And oh, alright. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Dodge. Just dodge. Okay. Alright. Okay. Heal. It, it's the way to do it. I Okay. Not as much ridiculous damages. Come on. Come on. One more should do it. One more should do it. And there we are. That's the end. Cool sunset. And stars. God slain, Elden Remembrance. And that's how you do this. That's how you do it. So before I actually get the ending, oh, that unhorses me. Summon Ronnie. Then touch fractured Merica and and mend the Elden Ring. the Elden Ring normally. You can use the mending rune of perfect order. <clears throat> this does nothing really. Just brings it back. This perfects order. This basically creates a land of undead. The Mending Rune of the Death Prince. The Mending Rune of the Fell Curse. It's the poop ending. And then this is Ronnie, which summons Ronnie. For Ronnie's ending, which is arguably one of the most involved ones. Here we are in Fractured America. Inside the Urge Tree itself. You know what? Let's check this out real quick. Remembrance of the Elden Beast unit of the Urge Tree. It was the vassal beast of the greater will and living incarnation of the concept of order. It's actually kind of remarkable how little that says. So, dexterity and, I guess, one more level of vigor. And that drop of runes is the highest one of the entire game. Even though the final boss of the DLC is arguably harder, it drops very slightly fewer runes than the final boss. The normal final boss. And that, it was interesting. It was fun. Now they're just here. I see. What's happened to Hugh? So oh, so she started forgetting too. Thank you for oh no, he forgot her, probably because of the connections. Maybe. Oh. With his purpose gone. Mm. Okay, talk. Until it all burns away. So presumably, does that mean she'll die here too? It's kind of sad. America. Slay the god Marika. You Ooh. cursed us all. Did not expect her to have that much of vitriol. Okay. So they are the only two in the hold now. Which makes sense because they're upgraders. Okay. We have nothing to say, so we can go and check and get from those remembrances with Enya's corpse. 
in that cutscene. I didn't even really think about it, but yeah, she was saying goodbye to us. It... I became a bit more attached to her at this playthrough by virtue of actually talking to her. Axe of Godfrey, Weapon of Godfrey, Elden Lord. It's broken during a battle fought as leader of the Tarnished during the Long March. This weapon is symbolic of Godfrey's vow to conduct himself as a lord, later becoming an emblem of the Golden Lineage. This is why Godric has a similar weapon. In the days of the past, a crown was warranted with strength. Skill Regal Roar, at least a mighty war cry, raising attack power, sending out a shockwave that cannot be guarded against by stomping your rival active. Strong attack becomes a lunging slash. Interesting. It's an option. This is a funny one. Rose Earthshaker, both hands on the ground to violently shake the earth and unleash a shockwave. Flow up with an additional input to slam the ground again. What I find really, really interesting is that they really missed an opportunity to make a weapon that just gave you Horowoo's fighting style in the DLC, because the DLC adds martial arts. But there are literally only two weapons. Only two martial arts. Period. One that's just punches, and another that's Basically the same thing, but with some of the attacks being kicks instead of punches. It still has the punches, but it's just... Okay, cool. You know, because they... In the lead-up, in advertising, they talked a lot about adding new weapon types, which is kind of... Which was unprecedented. No DLC had done that before. And then they put it in, and a lot of the weapon types have one or two weapons in them, period. It is what it is. We'll take that just for fun. America's Hammer, Stone Hammer made in the lens of the Newman... Gary Newman, the guy who made that song, that song, Cars. That is a good song. I like New Wave a bit more than is healthy for any human. It's not the lens between, but in the Japanese, I forget what the exact term was, but what they translated to Newman was basically just special person. The tool with which Queen America shattered the Elden Ring and Radagon attempted to repair it. Because they're two sides of the same individual. Hammer, hammer partially broke upon shattering the ring, becoming splintered with rune fragments. Hmm. Unique steel gold breaker, leave a pine while suspended in midair and view the rune shard with light, before smashing it down hard onto the ground, the heroic Radagon's signature attack. Describing him as having a signature attack is so funny. Very, very anime souls. Every time I use that, I feel like I have to yell up Gold Breaker or something like that. Hog Rider. Okay, sick of Relic Sword. Sword wrought for the remains of a god who should have lived a life eternal. Thoughts on what the weapon portends are many and varied. Some consider it the mark of a great sin or a sign of great devastation. Some think of it as the end of an age, while others the beginning. Skill Wave of Gold. Imbue the sword with Bogon, Golden Glory, then fire it at foes. A wide golden wave fans out outwards, sweeping through all enemies caught in its path. Hmm. Interesting. Looks like this. Its skill is actually pretty useful. So it'll probably duplicate a decent number of remembrances to try to get multiple things out of them. The beginning of the end or the end of the beginning? Childhood's end, maybe. Actually, because in Bloodborne, the ending in which you become an Eldritch God, a great one, is called Childhood's Beginning. Okay. Gone to everything from our remembrances right now. So I suppose the one thing left to do is to go in and actually roll credits. Actually, let me just see. I don't think they'd let me teleport to Fractured America from Elden Throne. It was funny... Seeing myself dismount Torrent at the end there. Because until the update, the patch that added the DLC, or I suppose more accurately, and yep, you can't even use that to teleport there. Oh well. For the patch that came out simultaneously with the DLC, you couldn't ride Torrent in the final fight against Elden Beast. Now you can. So my question is, to everyone who is still here right now, do I take normal ending? I can't take the ending that burns everything because I expunge the frenzied flame. Do I use the nothing ending, is in default ending, perfect order ending, undead ending, poop ending, or woman ending with Ronnie? Ronnie ending is arguably the true ending. Though technically all of them except frenzied flame and then maybe even frenzied flame. I did not know I could jump on top of America. Poor America. So that's her head. So no head? I like Perfect Order the best, actually. It's very Western of me. 
But I think we'll summon Ronnie. Oh, and that prompt just tells that ending straight up. I guess we're doing it. Age of Storms ending. Next time tomorrow, I guess, we'll start the DLC. <clears throat> it's actually rather similar to the Firekeeper ending from Dark Souls 3, which arguably suggests that instead of Word of Hollows ending, Firekeeper ending, Age of, End of Fire is actually the true one there. The battle is over, I see. I guess so. It was... Radagon God and Elden Beast being easier than Godfrey was actually a bit surprising to me. Though, to be fair, I just did not learn Godfrey's moves all that well, because I engaged him in range with the mage build. Didn't really have to bother dodging him. She's cradling her own mother's severed head. I don't like using this term, but the only thing I can really say is metal. And you went on the Venus de Milo. Hmm. I do solemnly swear to every living being and every living soul. It's the end of America. Hmm. Now cometh the age of the stars. A thousand year voyage under the wisdom of the moon. Here. Beginneth the chill night that encompasses all, reaching the great beyond. Weave your night into being, my dear daughter. And all into uh... fear, doubt, and loneliness, as the path stretcheth into darkness. You know, maybe I should have put on different armor before this. As good as Bullgoat is, it looks pretty stupid. Well then, shall we? We'll get better stuff in the DLC. <laughs> I forgot. I actually kind of forgot about the whole four hands thing. The ring's there. There we go. What is interesting is that there was a lot of debate in the fandom, especially in Western speaking, and that's the Age of Stars ending. Over whether the Ronnie ending is the best or not. The world by Miyazaki and George R. R. Martin. Because their co-director Tanimura, who also made Dark Souls 2, especially and was the only one who made its DLC. Well, the only director. They were programmers, of course. Don't want to forget them. But basically, basically whole thing about fear, doubt, and loneliness, it, it's more contextualized by things she says in the Japanese that weren't translated all that well, in that it's basically getting rid of all the gods of the setting and creating a world devoid of gods. It's basically the ending of Xenoblade, I guess. But in the Japanese, she's more clear about her motives and... Basically, her intention of removing the control of divine order over the inhabitants of the land between. Which means it's basically the exact opposite of the golden order ending. Perfect order ending. Which is just sort of making order so strong that it binds even gods as well. Instead of being a tool for gods to bind mortals, it just binds everyone. So basically, it's... An ending of pure and complete law versus an ending of pure and complete chaos. And it... Unlike all the other Souls games in which it's very plainly a matter of continuing to link the fire and prolonging the current world state is pretty unambiguously bad, in Elden Ring, it's really more a question of which philosophy to endorse, which makes it different and I think it's at least in part probably because of R. Martin's involvement it definitely is a bit more western of a framework and outlook hello credits are rolling 
Because there are a lot of people who say that the Roddy ending, the Chaos ending, is the best one. Which, well, there's still the whole DLC left. I'm getting started on the DLC tomorrow. We'll see how long that takes. It's pretty big. But as I was saying, I wanted to beat the entire base game with only things from the base game before I went on to the DLC. Well, you've probably got about five more minutes of credits left, so... Speak now or forever, hold your peace. But as I said, the Ronnie ending was probably not even in the game originally. Uh, if you need to sleep, sleep. Because most of the evidence suggests that before R. Martin got involved, which was a decent way along into development, the only endings would have been probably mending the Elden Ring or just accepting the Frenzied Flame and destroying the world. Because there was a big cutscene re related to the Frenzied Flame, aka anti-natalism fire, that was completely cut, or largely cut, and kind of neutered. Probably because it encouraged people to engage with the Frenzied Flame in lieu of all the other endings that were added after R. Martin came on board. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's fun. But, as I was saying... The shape of the project after R. Martin came on is different. Oh, they had mythos translations for Japanese. Interesting. Fire poets. Oh, downloadable content cat. And Omela got top building. Martha McIntosh. She was also in Dark Souls 3. As a covenant leader. Do I recognize anyone? I recognize Patches. William Vanderpool. Nobody else at the moment. Oh, the Nomadic Merchants had different voice actors. Kind of embarrassed about not noticing that. Okay. Naomi McDonald is Mikola. Oh, yeah, the credits. Yeah, a lot of things are kind of spoiled in the DLC if you beat this first. Don't do that. What are you for? Frankly, frankly, biting is more of a two to three year old thing. You should be ashamed of yourself. That said, do you even have the capacity for shame? Do you? Never mind. Well, okay. Mm hmm. I really do wonder, the music is interesting, it's a lot more ominous for the credits than I thought they'd be. But I do have the entire DLC left, which has arguably the hardest things in the game, maybe. We'll see. Big thing with the DLC is, it's completely disconnected from the main game. There are very few things that actually connect to events in the main game in the DLC. Which is, you know, the reason why is that you don't have to worry about what you've done, I suppose. But the fact that it's all about Mikola and there's no acknowledgement done of whether or not you've actually beaten Mikola, I mean, Melania's sister, feels a bit shallow. You know, maybe they might go back and change that. Apparently there's a new patch in the works. Coming out shortly, but I doubt, I doubt they're going to change out quest lines all that much. There were a few, and we got remix of the final boss second phase music, which itself is a remix of the menu music. But as I was saying, Daragon? Sounds like Radagon. But, uh, they changed some things with some quest lines in the first couple of patches the game got. Quest on this little monkey man who tailors your clothes for you. They made it a bit more obvious. They also patched it in. Let me just check. When was the Feli quest line patched in? Feli's quest line was patched in in. Doesn't say. Her quest line was not. Feli quest line patch. Let me see. Belly Questline patch. So it wasn't in there initially. Well, I don't imagine it was added after the first 
they did some tweaks to quests in the first couple patches after the game first came out. That was because it was also slightly rushed because of Bandai Namco and Coronavirus. I don't think they'll change much of anything to TLC, but... So many credits that are just Bandai Namco. In the future, they're not going to do Bandai Namco stuff. They've, they're going to be self-publishing, well, to an extent. They're owned by Katakawa. So I think they're going to be publishing through Katakawa in the future instead of through... Bonko, which is just sort of... If you're already owned by a big publishing company, why are you having somebody else publish anyway? Whatever. Before, they were always owned by Katakawa, but we are not going to begin Journey 2 now. All right. So here we are. The place is still burning. And... Rest at the table. Begin Journey 2 or not. Not right now. So, we got Derica here. I see. Nothing to say. No. Nothing to say. The only thing left to do now is go deep down here through the entrance of the DLC. But that will come later. And by later, I mean tomorrow. But tomorrow is tomorrow. Tomorrow is not tonight. So over here in our nice burning round table hold, I think I will take my leave. Level 202. Wow. Okay. So I think I'll see a decent number of you tomorrow, hopefully. Thank you for everything, and yeah, Santa Ragan, have a good one.